Good morning. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Hope everybody is doing well today. I always, I always hope everybody's doing well. That seems to be the thing that I typically always say. Happy Saturday. Hope you're doing well. Um, <laughs> but I do. I do mean it with all of my heart. I am Dreaming Tabitha. And today we've got, of course, of course, special guests with me. That's right. I did say that in the plural form, guests, not just one, but two fabulous people joining me in the studio, the virtual studio this morning. And uh, I just want to say quickly before I introduce my guests, thank you for being here. And if you can do me a favor and be sure to hit the like button on your way in, grab some coffee, grab a blankie. I don't know where you're at, but it's kind of chilly here this morning. It's ridiculous. I'm a little bit over it. I, I'm wait, I've been waiting so many months for summer to come, even though I know technically it's not summertime, but I've been waiting patiently. And it's flipping to fall outside. It's cold. <laughs> Apparently some kind of storm is coming my way. I would like it to come and leave because I'm ready to not wear my hoodies. This is what I live for. I live for the season where I don't wear my hoodies. But anyway, Welcome, welcome, and let's bring on the guests that you're all waiting for. We have with us R2, the Icky, and JT, also known as the cat. Yes, round of applause, <laughs> weak applause. Yes, yes, yes. Was, welcome, yeah. welcome. Hi, guys. <laughs> How are you? How am I? Flipping it awesome most of the time. Hey. I, try, I, I try to be. How are you <laughs> is the real question. Um... Yes. Carolyn, good. JT good. Coffee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a little early. Yeah. You so, guys are what an most... hour behind me. Is that what it is? You're yeah. like at nine o'clock. Yeah, but you know, this is a new yeah. time zone for JT because he was uh... pansies. No. <laughs> I've been out here for like two months. Like really, right? I'm, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> You've good been out morning. there for like three days. I thought <laughs> three days. Uh, we've got little Spidey, Mrs. R two, of course. We've got. Uh, Riker 1776 and then we've got Chris the Geek hello hello come on in thank you for being here yeah we've got after the weekend if you don't know what after the weekend is it would be the days that come after Saturday Monday yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're a Monday stream you know so <laughs> right and I do if you are curious after you've heard what the people have to say I do have my guests um, information, of course, as always, in the description box down below. You'll find um, their Twitter handles and also their channels. I also have JT's channel in there, but we'll talk more about that here in just a second. Today, they're coming on, and we are going to be painting Mario. Let me bring that up here. Mario. Yes, we are. Let me move this over just a second. Um, now, it was interesting when I was... Uh, asking r2 was kind of like the go-to guy um to ask and um as you can see he's clearly the mascot he's got the merchandise you know publicly displayed everywhere so obviously he was the man to go he to. is yeah and <laughs> but i was like what do you guys want to paint and you said mario and luigi and i um in he my didn't mind ask me by the way he just chose he didn't ask me what i wanted to paint. you were the a executive busy movie. decision I was thinking, I'm like, well, there's, you know, like, what are good, like, two duos since you're going to have both of us on? And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't know, you know, Mario and Luigi. I mean, you could have picked Dumb and Dumber. That would have been fine. I don't, that would have been a weird painting. All right. Um, so <laughs> I, I didn't really want to paint Jim Carrey. I'm sorry. Hey, it's ADC. Hello. Welcome. I need to get you on this channel. I would love to have, have a painting session with you. Welcome. Good afternoon for you yeah. where you're at um he has an awesome channel too with his color challenges you should be sure to check that out artists supporting artists appreciate you being here um so when you said you wanted to do mario and luigi in my mind i was thinking two different paintings i'm like okay how are we going to do this and i just assumed that it was going to be one and the other for each of you and then later on after i was done with the mock-up i'm like i wonder if he meant them both in the same painting. And I was like, oh, that would have been a little bit strenuous to try to do in the time frame that we sometimes have around here. But um, then I, I told R2, I'm like, what about the painting that I did 
with Mahogany Draws on my channel. I was like, technically, even though I've already painted that, he didn't actually paint that picture. And he's like, that looks too hard. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we'll go with the simplified. And I will message you. I will message you. Let's be in the works, man. I would love, love to talk with you again. So, all right. That being said, let me situate this here. And uh, here we go. So I'm going to rotate my little microphone. If you guys are at the ready, yes, yes, we're going to get this started here. <laughs> All my wires are just kind of literally crossing right here. I got <laughs> Okay. I think I'm ready. I hope I'm ready. So all good to go. The first thing that we need, of course, is the canvas, whatever size you decided to bring with you today. I'm doing a nine by 12, a really awkward size. When I told you guys that, I wasn't really sure if they had that available <laughs> for most people. I got, I got so, nine by 12. You have six of them. Excellent. Well, that just works. And then we've got our stencils for today. Yes, we are working with the stencils. I've got mine cut out already. All that good. Kind of like... um. It's kind of cool. You could just kind of. Like, I'm gonna keep it and put it on the camera. You just like right, right above the line there, so it looks like it's a graphic design, but it's. Uh, it's not. All right, and so we've got our cup of water. We've got our brushes. The first thing we're going to do, um, JT, did you bring blue or did you only bring green? I got um, I got multiple blues. I got sky blue. Excellent. <laughs> you guys have brought. You guys. I got, so uh, I gave them a very. I got Simplified Caribbean, list. Caribbean, I mean, blue. I told them I'm like, just bring blue, red, and yellow, black, and white. And so we're going to mix our colors. And they brought like every color and its cousin with them. I bought so... a little set that just had everything. So <laughs> this is um, Apple Barrel. If you're curious. Know. Yes, Apple the brand. Barrel. For the win. So which one right. do you want me? Like sky blue or Caribbean? Well, so what we're going to do is take this kind of pure blue here, and then we're going to add white as we go up. We're going to create a nice fade here. So taking our biggest brush here, we're going to go ahead and just dip it into our blue. Okay. 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 Are, are we, <laughs> is that is that complicated? Can we do this? We got this. No, we, I'm good. We're good. Okay. We're good. All right. All right. Let me go. If it, let me know if it gets too too complicated. <laughs> Putting blue on the paintbrush. My goal is just to get Tabitha to yell at me once and say you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> okay. I cool. I have I ever done that to any of my guests? You do that to no, Dan a but, lot. But I would be the one. I feel like. <laughs> Well, but Dan's not here painting, so that doesn't count when I'm on inside. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this brush. We're going to hold it vertically, like so, long ways, up and down, and just do a nice streak across the bottom here, just like so. Okay, back and forth, please. Nice long strokes like this. Uh, okay, hold on. Yeah, let me make this a little bigger. It's a little bit off camera. So here we go. Nice long strokes. You don't want to have the paint too thick. That takes too long to dry. The background is not the main purpose of our painting. It's just to create a nice little happy ambiance. Hey, TD says there hey, are TD. three of my favorite people. Hey, everyone. Hello. All right. So Thank for some reason, people take the longest time with their background. I think it's because they're trying to get the jitters out when we first start. And so I just want to go ahead and tell you, as I've already forewarned you before the show started, we're not going to be wasting time on this background. <laughs> I didn't say oh. it in that many words, but I'm saying it now. I'm cruising. Um, she said, hey, this is the joys of painting, not the slows of painting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the joys of painting, not the slow. I like that. Um, so yeah, just a nice long stroke here. And this is going to be the darkest portion of our blue. So when you've got it, there's no wrong way to do that either, by the way. R2, I'll let you know if you're doing it wrong, though. Um, and I would, I'm going to leave blue on my brush when I have a decent strip here and then reapply blue to my paintbrush. And then we're going to add a little bit of white, right? So just like so. You can see it's not a lot necessarily, but I do want to make sure that my blue is uh, on my brush is touching the blue on my canvas. So I'm going to flip this so the white is on top like this. Um, it just makes it a little bit nicer when we blend. 
And we're just going to go back and forth a couple of times here. Let the blue and the white mix. Kind of work it down a little bit too. This is a nice warm-up exercise for us. So you get accustomed to, you know, how to use the paintbrush, um, pressure, and all that stuff. So it might not be a drastic change at first, and that's okay because change is hard for some people. And so we just want to do it gradually. And the pretty much the idea is that we're going to get lighter and lighter as we go upwards. So just increase the white. Um, <laughs> you know, anytime Whoa. you say something like that these days, exactly, it just sounds offhanded. But we're just going to increase the white as we get to the top of the We canvas. need more white. <laughs> <laughs> we need more white. We need more white. All right. So just carry it on. Um, so this should be pretty simple. We're able to do this. We got this. So that being said, you guys are after the weekend. Tell the people, tell the people what is after the weekend. Uh, I'll, I'll let R2 <laughs> go with that I was one. Say, tell them, JT. <laughs> it was just like this pause. and then, uh. <laughs> um, We are a uh, movie review channel, and we, we mainly focus on films from our childhood that we grew up watching. So, mm -hmm. uh I mean, think of every classic 80s and, uh, and 90s film. I mean, that's right. What we Sometimes we do 2000s. Yeah, sometimes we do 2000s. Sadly, it was 20 years ago. So. Stop it. No no <laughs> negativity here, JT. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, okay. So movie reviews. I like a lot of people. Um, it's movie reviews from the past. A lot of people do the current ones. What made you decide that you want to do the ones in the past and not the ones that are current? Um, mainly just because, you know, it seems like a lot of people have a lot of channels that are more about like, oh, I hate this. I hate that. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the honest truth. It was like, well, let's talk about what we, we like. Um, right. So that's kind of where the idea came from. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we did have another co-host uh, before it actually started off with me and uh, Maria, the Geeky May she Crochet. Rest in peace. Yeah. I mean, she's uh, not dead, but I just hope she's resting. In peace. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she's, uh, she's, uh, she's a friend. Well, she's a she, friend. It's all good. <laughs> it seems like everybody who's on the channel uh, has moved. Um, she she was in Peru, and she's uh, now mm -hmm. uh, up in Canada. Canada. Which uh, hopefully she's resting in peace up there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to message her and tell her like we talked about and you. The, and then JT just left uh, uh, Arizona for Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, not much of a difference. Technically, um, well, <laughs> it's been a year since I've been on after the weekend. Yeah. Uh, what really? Yeah. How have I not paid attention to that? I feel like a horrible friend. I'm I'm, I'm not the greatest person to pay attention. Oh, okay. That must be the re that's the obvious reason. Um, but, but no, uh, yeah. So I I started in like around March of twenty twenty two. So yeah, it's almost it's been a year. Wow. You know, when you say twenty twenty two, it's been a year. It just wow. Not wild. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, well, I used to do thumbnails and stuff mm -hmm. with Rick. Um, for I helped him out with thumbnails when they were first getting started. Yeah, you and they decided to. Yeah. Then they decided to. Um, what do you say? Uh, add me in the show. They wanted me on the actual show. I do remember that. It's funny. We have all what known each other for about two years or so on the internet. Would that be about right, R two? I think so. That's that does sound right. Yeah, two years, two and a half, something like. I've been on Inside the Booth for two years this month, and um, please, please hold your applause. And I, <laughs> and so That's I probably, pretty cool. I probably, yeah. I probably knew some of you guys, or at least, you know, the whispers in the wind. Um, now you're monetized. We are. I, I'm not. They are. We are. Oh. <sighs> I'm working on it. So if you guys want to subscribe to the channel and just watch some of my <laughs> previous episodes, that'd be doing me a solid. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I remember seeing JT in the chat a lot. And, you know, I then also saw you starting to do the graphic design for a lot of other people. 
um, yep. and you do really great work. I saw recently that you did Nomi's, um, what is it, her logo or symbol, whatever it was, and I knew it was you. Like I, I just could tell when I saw it. I'm like, that's got to be JT's work. And uh, oh, oh, we have a reveal here. Uh, my blue is oh. not as dark as yours, but it's it's blue. You're higher up in the atmosphere than I am, so mm -hmm. that's you know that's what we'll yeah, go. Get darken and I, up at the bottom, but I thought it's that would okay. Be okay. You don't have to. Again, everybody's going to do this slightly different. Um, thanks, yeah. to, thanks, TD. You're mine came out like it. so <laughs> blotchy, and like I've got like it's bad. <laughs> Let's have a look. It's not bad. It's more modern. Modern. Yeah. It's it's more modern. I kind of like it. It's a different style than what you know we were aiming for. It's not like we didn't have an example or something um, to look at. But you're that's such okay. a good teacher. You're like that looks great, and then behind the scenes, you're like this guy sucks. <laughs> well, JT, look, you don't need to be telling the people what we talk about when the shows are not finished. Good morning, KJ Corey. Um, no, R two. It's fine. It's just that you can tell you stopped abruptly with too much paint on your brush on the sides. And it doesn't make, again, I always tell people, it doesn't make it good this, or bad. I think I'm trying to get from side to side. <laughs> Probably, I also have Admiral Blue. Nice. Well, we can save that. You can save your choice of um, blues for the color in Mario's eyes, if you would like. So that way it's yeah. different. I think, from I your think my sky is a good, good color. So. It's a very good sky color for sure. But it was um, it sky looks, blue. It kind of looks like a listless day <laughs> in the month of March, you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, R2, probably what happened is that I don't know how much pressure you're applying. I'm going to assume that you're, are you painting on a canvas itself, like a wooden canvas, wrapped canvas, or a canvas plank? I think this Same is canvas, canvas as me. Here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I it just kind of looked like sometimes when people I've seen it when they have wrapped canvases with a wooden frame, they'll push too hard, and so the brush bumps up against the wood underneath of it, and that's what causes those edges. So since you didn't do that, I don't know why yours looks like that, but it's okay. It's beautiful. It's um, I like blue. So it, JT's like I'm out. <laughs> He's done. So. Take your time there. Finish well. I, let me let me use that word uh, loosely here. Take your time. <laughs> now I want you to be happy with your background. It sets the mood, sets the scene. Yeah, exactly. Robert Laurie says side to side, Danielson. Side to side, Artuson. That's yeah, and, and you know, apply a little as pressure as you can, lightly, Light. like you're in the sky. Great, graceful. Um, our, a little Spidey says, you guys are doing a great job, Dad and oh. JT. I'm sure it will look beautiful. Right, Tabitha? Right, little Spidey. He's just sucking up to his dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, ooh, I have JT working on a project for me. Well, so while R2 is busy finishing up his sky, JT also has his own channel, which the link is in the description box, his, his side hustle over there, uh, Late Night with Cap. And you go over, um, We've I've been on your channel twice. Randomness. Right. right. And you go over <laughs> randomness and bad graphic designs. Yeah, that's um, the main that's one of the main yeah, that that's where the main concept is, is to laugh at just design failures in the world. Um you've been on a few shows with me and, and laughed at a, a few interesting ones. Um and, and then the other and then the other thing is I I usually talk about some some interesting topic from the internet, either <laughs> A history yeah. story or something that Bigfoot, happened recently. Our favorite, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what made you decide to? What you kind of? We're gonna do kind of after the weekend, late night with Cap until you know R two catches up to the rest of the elite. <laughs> I know. And, I'm trying. <laughs> no, it's okay. R two, take your time. She um, said fast. <laughs> right. The the, the 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 haste of painting. Right. Um. Mm -hmm. No, it's okay. But uh, it gives the rest of the back room plenty of time to dry. But so what made you decide to start that channel? Um, R2. <laughs> so uh, he an was... Inspiration to us all. Yeah, he said, you should do your own thing. You've, you've got a good personality. You, you, you have some neat ideas, like, for our, even our own channel. So um, I said, all right, I'll try. And there were some other people in the community, too, that said you should try it out. Um, so I... As you know, I started on Twitter. I was just literally just Captain America doing the same stuff, like laughing at silly things or 
making fun of people. All we, the things that we do on Twitter right. uh, and supporting other channels. So everybody was thinking you should do your own. And I think you would do really well. And, and in a year from now, here I am. So it, I just wanted to do a show where you, you kind of stepped away from all the other main topics in the world. So where you can just sit down and laugh, have a good hour of, of just getting away from the world. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, that's what really the internet was for, right? Was to just kind of step away from the outside world and then just go look what's out there and kind of laugh. Us in a different way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. You don't, you don't really talk about, you know, you, you don't, really talk about pop culture and things like that is you're just talking it, it about comes more up, of like it, yeah it, it will come up in conversation but we won't focus on it Mm-mm. you no. your channel in a way kind of reminds me of like the darwin awards art edition like that's <laughs> what you're like yeah, we laugh yeah. at people for the it's a late night show it's a show right? yeah there we go better. look at that i you're darker than me that's good <laughs> well, he's outside more, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's a late night show. Ah, the, the sun coming it might beg differ. <laughs> um, so all right, let me get this back up here. And uh, yeah, it's right. it's it's um, but like I said, it's um, it that's why I have guests on. So it's like it's like a late night show, like almost well, like look a look at that. I hope she are resting in peace, pal. <laughs> it's Maria. Yeah, she's she's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> rest in peace maria not that you're dead we just want you to rest in peace <laughs> up there she's, in canada uh, she's closer to the sky than the rest of us right that's how, that's how yeah. science works right mm-hmm. um so we want our background to dry completely before we put our stencil on which, because of course this is with paper we don't want it to stick <laughs> We don't want it to stick to our background. She's like, rest in peace. She yeah, you'll, what just we're talking to, about. you'll just have to catch the beginning of the show, Maria. We weren't talking about you. And um, she's a fantastic <laughs> person. I hope that she puts more content on her own channel. I, yeah, I've she's been supposed meeting- to start back up with her um, unlocking lore in the summertime. Excellent. The perfect time. Campfires and all that. What, what? Mm-hmm. And... Um, I've I've been meaning to do a collaboration, <laughs> dude. When did I die? No wonder I scared people. <laughs> well, aren't we all a little dead inside? Um. <clears throat> anyway, so we want our stencil right supposed now. To have this much paint on my hands already? Of course. If you're not okay. making a mess, then you're not having. I always get there. Dude, what, paint? Oh, what are you having... doing? I mean, I've got little flecks of white paint on here. It's all good. If you're not making a mess, you're not having fun. So again, we want our background to be dry before we move on to our stencil. We're going to be doing this in two parts. So I would go ahead and say we'll use our time wisely. That did you already did you print two of these out, JT? No. No. Okay, then we won't use our time wisely. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I was going to say R two is already ahead of the game. We would cut out two so we wouldn't have to worry about it. That's okay. We'll get there. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, So letting this, just kind of letting this dry here. Um, So the weekly schedule for after the weekend is always Monday, of course, right? You don't veer from that at all? Sometimes. We'll have like a special premiere. um, Well, I'm sorry. After the weekend, yes, that's always on Monday. It's not all about you, JT. Yeah. We're we're focusing on after. I think we've had one or two where we... um... We did one for Star Wars Day, and that was on like or Star Wars Podcast Day, where that was on a Tuesday or something. I can't remember. Um. So, what inspired after? I, now, I by the way, I love the graphics, I love the concept, and I love the name. It's just to me, it's catchy. So, what what made it after the weekend? Uh. Well, our our previous host actually came up with the name. Um. Me and her were like, "Hey, you want to?" talk about movies and uh we actually were a little inspired by inside the booth and um she was like yeah sure so like what do we call ourselves and we were gonna say movie mondays but there's like 18 channels out there with movie mondays and so yeah um schedule wise for maria and me it was gonna be on monday and so she's like well why don't we just call it after the weekend because we're reviewing a movie after the weekend so 
I mean, it's brilliant. It's pretty simple, but I think it's a pretty fantastic name. Like to me, it's catchy. Like after the weekend, mm -hmm. like, what's happening after the weekend? Because you know, everybody lives for the weekend. Am I right? But the way that you've got the font and the colors and everything like that, and and you know, being a podcast, it's just like it's like carrying the excitement of the weekend over into the oncoming week. So after the weekend, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, I mean, Joker. that's what you would do, right? And back in the day, when you would go to the movie theater on a Friday or a Saturday night, and then on Monday you would talk about it at school or um, at the water cooler at your at your job at the arcade. Yeah. yeah, so um cuz normally you didn't have streaming services back then where you could just watch it whenever you had right. to go to the movie theater and you either did it on a Friday or a Saturday and then you came back on like I said Monday. And movies, and you know, it. we're supposed to bring like movies were things that brought us together, you know. Yeah, we would all have yeah. to gather at the movie theater and um then we yeah, we would meet again either at school, you meet at work, you meet at church, wherever mm -hmm. you gather with your regular folk. And be like, hey, did you see that movie on the weekend? You know, and it just mm -hmm. totally makes sense. I, I love that. So um, I, I feel like yeah. That, yeah. that has also died so suddenly in the past few years, too. Yeah. Well, thanks to pirating and um, <laughs> <laughs> streaming services. Uh, Rogue Attraction. Hello. Good morning. Wait, how is this working? Is it a competition painting? Of course. I already just nominate myself as the winner. But mm -hmm. um but JT Sky looks pretty fantastic on his list list Tuesday in the month of March. Um, those are what, what Joker says. Those are for folks who are who work normal weeks, right? Well, he's right, a bartender, exactly. right? Uh, JT, well, Rogue has no no hope in you. My money's aren't R two. J is all JT is all digital. Wow, rude. Well, then the 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 race is on. So. I'm going to test my... Yeah, I think I'm pretty dry, so... Well, yeah, your I'm humor dry. is for sure, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is anybody going to laugh? I'm going to risk it. Is See, gonna laugh at it seems pretty dry. <laughs> okay, it's dry. well, if, yeah. if not, you can always pick it up and just kind of wave it around or take a piece of paper, take your stencil if you need to, kind of fan across it, and... I was um, using my pocket fan. <laughs> <gasps> brilliant wow r2 see r2's got all his little tricky sneaky sneak things up his sleeve there um uh, maria says i'll take that bet joker says competition painting my vote goes to the artist tabitha for sure for the win well maybe if i wasn't on on camera but <laughs> sometimes my paintings Ta are just Tabitha's like the pace car what are you talking about right um I'm that dude out front of the cyclists to just make sure random bunnies don't run across the road while the other people are competing <laughs> down the mountains. <laughs> okay, so let me go ahead and shift this again because it's how we roll around here. So I'm grabbing my stencil. Let me make larger again. Here we go. So you'll notice that it's rounded on the bottom here and in my original painting i cut i cut that off basically so it just looked like he was kind of popping up out of the bottom of the surface now it's up to you if you want to kind of mount him in the sky like this that's totally up to you i want you to have creative liberty here i'm going to stick with my original design and kind of bring him down so that his the middle of his face is towards the center we got a little bit of open space up top of here that's just up to you okay and so when you get that done we're gonna when you figure out you know the composition where you want it to be at and all that stuff we're gonna trace around it so have fun what are you doing r2 <laughs> yeah uh, uh, hey whoa no 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 competition you gotta make up your own minds <laughs> no it's okay you can work off each other it's fine all i'm going upside way. down you're going upside down is there a creative reason for that? Yeah, I don't know. It's different. Just daring. No, to be I don't. Different. I don't know. I'll just. I'll just come, make him coming out of the sky. JT's a rebel at heart. People don't really know, but he's like a death metal kind of guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's see here. <laughs> Maybe sideways. I, don't I mean, yeah. There's really no wrong way since he does kind of pop out of nowhere all the time in the game um well so even though you guys are predominantly um 
you know, older movies, classic movies and things like that. Has anybody seen the Super Mario movie? I have not. Uh, I did. Oh, you did. And, okay. Uh, little little Spidey saw it um, opening day. Oh, or, nice. Or no, the day after, I think. Oh, after the weekend. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, did you guys dress up when you went? Uh, <laughs> little Spidey did. Oh, um, that would have been cool. You yes. would have dressed up with him. Um, it, it would have been I, cool, I, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, so what did you think? Uh, I don't know. The internet's been out for a while now about this movie, so I don't know if there could really be any spoilers. But you know, JT, if not, you know, you can whisper. Um, it's okay. I I plan on seeing it here in a little bit, but it came out when I was kind of moving. So okay. Um. I enjoyed it, but it's not much of a story to it. Um, yeah, that's that's what I heard. It's basically quite literally a video game movie. Like it's just a video game that I mean, turned into a yeah, movie. Yeah, does it really need a story? Time. We um, all need a story. Yeah. It's saving the princess. That's pretty much what it is, right? Uh, we have a question for R2. Does R2 live near Holiday Island? Yes. <laughs> No, because I don't know where that is. <laughs> I was gonna say, is that uh, is that like is that, like a, is that like a theme park thing? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, is that one of like the Mario worlds? I haven't played all the games, so yeah, neither have I. Um, um, I did see the. Do you remember the Super Mario movies movie from the uh, '90s? Uh, yes. Yes, I did see that in the theater as a kid, and I was really that was a that. that was pretty exciting because you thought it was going to be good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and now, then uh yeah. <laughs> what's interesting about that film, right? Is uh so I follow these other YouTubers and um oh shoot, what are they called? YouTubers. But they're they're VF, VF, VFX artists, right? Mm -hmm. And the Corridor Crew. Corridor Crew, thank you. And they were doing a review on the Mario movie, right? And um it's interesting that while that movie got a lot of hate, disgruntled comments, <clears throat> that movie apparently was a huge step forward in, via, uh, in visual effects, right? And so it actually opened the doorway for the stuff that we have now. Just nobody focuses on that because a lot of us don't have that inside information, and um, we're mm. so focused on how bad the movie was that we we don't it was, know. It had some cool effects, and I do remember it was just uh -huh. oddly. It wasn't the game. It was it was more of a right. like a, it was a retelling, a reimagining of what Mario like a, would like be. what it would be in the real life, not really like yeah. Tabitha was going to say it was a huge step forward in disappointment. For some people, it really was, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Um, but apparently this movie pushed the movie industry for effects forward. And so while it gets all this hate, people don't, it's basically the unsung hero of the of Hollywood, essentially. Um, Drunk 3PO says, I didn't know if he was close by. I'll be in Holiday Island, Arkansas in June. You've got to be um, close to that. Okay. Arkansas is not that big. Mrs. R2 taking the rain saying Holiday Island, Arkansas is about an hour away from us. There you go. Ooh. You could you could hang out with Jay. I wonder who's taller. Oh, Jay is. He's a couple inches taller than me. I mean, I thought he was tall. He would be taller in person, but he, he he's out. very he's tall. He's. I came up to like his. Maybe well, yeah, his but that's you know shoulder. short shorter people can say that because mm -hmm. then everybody's tall. I mean, yeah. So are we doing? Are we? Uh, yeah, he. I remember. But there's the cool thing about meeting Jay in person. He's just so friendly. He he, he, yeah. he when he comes up to you and says hi to you, it, it it's like you've known him for multiple years. So um I'm well I'm glad that I could be the conduit to can maybe, you know, get you guys together, go out and have fun. Um we have we have a proposal yeah. in <laughs> I, I, I would love to. Um He says he will it's like do you're it. gonna take you on a date. Make sure right. you bring flowers and a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Cajun Corey says Jay is only two inches taller than me. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a lot taller than me. So. 
So we've got our stencil. I have decided to cut it in pieces like so. This will really. All right, really... so I'll, I can do that now because I only have one. Right. right. So go ahead and be doing that. It will definitely, R2's already got that. So what I recommend for those of us who are ahead of the game here um, to go ahead and basically put your stencils back on individually, or at least you can use the Mario head here and just go around the fingers so that we know where that's at. All of the lines and stuff like that are going to get covered up with our paint. So it's no big deal if, you know, you can, if it doesn't make sense and we can see it. Um, yeah. The face is going to be super fun. Don't let it intimidate you. We're going to start out with something easy. We're going to start out with the pipe first. And uh, I'm going to try to make it a little bit easier than what I did with my original one. Um, Joker says, wait, the Bob Hoskins movie pioneered VFX for future films. Sounds like something fans of that movie would say. Actually, if you watch the Corridor Crew, they were like, man, this movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but then one of them sitting there and he's explaining, he's like, yeah, but if you pay attention, they're a fascinating channel to watch. Um, when they did uh, Avatar, the way of water, the breakdown of that one iconic scene that took the internet by storm about that, the strap in the water and stuff like that. And then just talk when they talk about like the old Terminator movies and all of that, it's stuff. It's really fascinating to watch and uh, appreciate you know, I think JT, you know, you'd be the same like me, you know, working behind the scenes with graph digital art and things like that. You have a, a just a better understanding and a better appreciation for how little recognition the tiniest details. Get yeah, no, you're right. Uh, like I'm the always fascinated with the um, intros and outros of movies. So, like, you know how sometimes with the, uh, the Marvel movies are very animated. They're very graphic with their their end credits and their uh, oh, yeah. intros. And, oh, or yeah. sometimes like if the movie doesn't, it needs to be a, kind of a dramatic movie. It's very subtle, but there's some neat um, animations with the text. Um, that that always always makes me kind of fascinated. Like, well, that's cool how they did that. I wonder what they, how they, how they animated that or what that made they, what made them think to do that. So. Well, yeah, because if you go back in the day, you know, it was just like the movie ends and then roll the credits. Yeah, or you had the um, in way back classic. You had this really artistic title frame with the main character, main actors, and then then they had like they listed all the credits in the beginning. Yes, you know? and it took about a half an hour before you actually got to see John Wayne riding across the desert on his horse. I mean, um, it gave you time to get your popcorn and sit down, right? Or, you know, if you're watching The King and I or something like that, and you're like, all right. Where yeah. <laughs> I, I do have a fun fact about the original Super Mario Brothers film. Oh, fun and fact. Listen. It, it had a uh, end credit scene, but nobody saw it because nobody stayed. <gasps> Are you serious? Yeah, it was. Uh, now Spike I need to and Izzy. watch them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spike and Izzy were trying to sell the, the Mario Brothers game to Nintendo. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Was wow. it Yoshi in that game or that movie? The, yeah. But he was just a dinosaur, right? Like a he velociraptor a little... or a tiny T Rex or something? Yeah, he was a little T Rex. Right. They couldn't ride him. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, also with our, uh, we don't necessarily have that with our stencil here, but you'll notice that Mario has these lines right here for the knuckle. Let me make this uh, yeah, yeah. a little bit bigger here. And um, we'll want to just kind of take that and just mimic that. So we come over to the side and just kind of do like a little cloud, just like so. You've got cloud hands. Mario. Right, cloud hands, which are perfect for our, our, our sky, you know. Here we go. And then I was going to ask you guys too about, it's always fun, I think asking people about their usernames right so r2 for the life of me it's difficult to remember what your real name is because i've been calling you r2 for two years now but so how did r2 the icky um, uh, <laughs> well you know my name is in my my nickname there right so, grow, growing up i went by ricky and then as i got older i've gone by rick um and uh, um, I, uh, 
my family had a, a, a hobby shop when I lived in California. And for whatever reason, people were coming up with nicknames for everybody. And somebody just said, I would be R to the icky. And uh, so I've had sounds this. sounds like nick- a terrible white person rap, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, well, I think that that's kind of where it came from, too. My, uh, my brother, uh, I don't know if he still is, but he was friends with, uh, if anybody's familiar with the rapper E-40, his accountant. And uh, okay. they were talking about, like, where he got that name. And so everybody's like. Rick would have a would have a hip hop name. He'd be R to the Icky, and so yeah, okay. I've had that. In, I've had this nickname for nearly twenty years. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. So I know JT's gone through um, some identity crisis, you know, in the past year with his his. I don't know name. if it's identity crisis. It's just <laughs> branding. Excuse me. Identity indecision, indecide. In, how does that word? Well, Indecisions. You know, yeah. <laughs> most of America's that way right now. Um, so <laughs> JT's like, I was just trying to fit in before it was cool. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you, you were captain. Oh, oh, captain, my captain for a while. I'm still that. I'm still that. It's just, that was more of like a phrase, uh, for my, um, uh, Twitter. Like I just wanted the people to, cause it's okay. So, oh, if you, that came from a, a very famous poem, but that mm-hmm. poem is also in, in a, one of my, one of my favorite movies, um, dead poet society. Okay, I've um, never seen. And well, you should see it, and then we should review Don't it. Don't tell me what a- to do after the weekend. Um, but anyways, there's a teacher, uh, Robin Williams, um, who stands up to the he stands up to the the traditional school um, heads of school that they don't want him to teach certain things, and he wants to teach these students so they can have a better understanding of the world. And uh, a little back then, it was yeah, he was trying to teach a lot of a little bit of you know diversity a little bit but it wasn't like mm-hmm. what it is today you right, just want right. to show you like there are di- yeah there was like not everything is this you know high collar um white collar industry there's a lot of other things out there that you need to learn um and the other the school did not like that so he he stood up to that um and he loved that poem and he read that poem to the students and it was oh captain my captain um and that's what I thought I was doing on Twitter for a lot of these YouTubers. They were trying to do something different. They were uh, um, at, being outspoken about some of the things they didn't like. So I said, yeah. "Oh, okay, I, I'll I'll support them and I'll 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 do that." And then it just I kind of brought Captain America within that because he did the same thing. He he supported um, other characters, other uh, sides of the world. Like he he was always there to support whoever needed it, regardless of what their beliefs were so and then he yeah then it just turned into you know jt cap so well i will say that if there was a competition for the best reason to have their username hands down jt would win r2 was like well somebody gave it to me jt's like here's a history lesson (laughs) Uh, ethan hawk was in that movie too yeah robin williams ethan hawk was very young he was very very young um so before we continue with our conversation, I I told the guys bring the three primary colors, and so like I said before, they establishment. Brought every- Joker's right. I was losing my words there. He stood up to establishment. It's like traditional schools, traditional establishment. Fight the power. Um. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think guys- it was early. If I'm if I'm correct, I think that movie came out in the fifties. Oh, like like was set in the fifties or sixties. So. Um, you guys brought every other color and its cousin. So I am creating green and we'll want basically two different, two to three different kinds of greens. We'll want, I'm creating a medium green, my base green. And then oh, I'm we're doing have green a, now. Okay. Yep. We're going to work mm-hmm. on the pipe. And I've got uh, limeade or Kelly green. Well, you get to choose whatever kind of green tickles your fancy. Um, you can kind of use, let me put the. I mean, we all know what the green from Mario looks like. I'll use this as a swatch. And, you know, it can be slightly different from this. But we just want to have a, a three different kind of green. Since you guys already brought variety with you, I'm going to make my own. Because I'm fancy like that. I'm bougie. But, um, no, I just I like feeling like a magician making colors out of colors. <laughs> It's just how it feels. So, um, yeah, we want a base green, right? And we're going to be using our... Um, Excuse me, we're going to continue to use our one inch flat brush. And so you'll want to rinse it out and then dry it off as best as you possibly can. 
And uh, I'm beating the devil out of it. Excellent work. Um, go, you wow. got to go a little faster, though, if you really want to nail it. You know, it's got to be that. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I have so many electronics around me. I don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, that's what your paper towels for. And so stroke, I talk about this on my channel all of the time when I have my guests on. Stroke pattern, very important. We can see what direction we carried our brush in their background. We want to continue with that for the top portion of the pipe and then go in the opposite direction for the bottom portion. Because since we're doing the one color first, we need to be having a distinguishing factor between the two. So I'll take my brush here. And we're going to go, of course, around the little cloud hands, but I want to cover up the edges and just go slow and just drag it across. And whatever, like I've already covered up some of the, the hand here, and that's okay. If you do something like that, we'll just paint over it later. We're on. going dark to light from the bottom. Um, right now, dark to light. Well, we're going to be bouncing back and forth in, with strategic okay. areas of what. It, right now, we're just using the base green, whatever you've chosen. And I'm just going to drag it across the top portion of the pipe. We're separating the lip from the, the main stem there. I don't really know plumbing terms. So it's just pretty much like that. Cool. Cool. Yeah, not, not too difficult. And then we just fill it in carefully. Are you going to see the Bob Ross movie? Um, <clears throat> it's interesting because it's like it is and it's not Bob Ross, right? It's like a spoof of it. Um, yeah. I don't know that I will go to the theater to see it. I might if it's streaming and if it doesn't have indecent things in it. <laughs> go see it. But I mean, it's Owen Wil. What a choice, right? Owen Wilson to essentially become Bob Ross. Yeah, it doesn't was, make any sense. I was watching him in Shanghai Noon the other day. I'm like, I wanted to watch Rush Hour, but I didn't have it, so I went to the next best thing, and that was Shanghai Noon. And I, Owen's Wilson is just so funny. He's so different. He's so random. But yeah. Uh, then, you know, thinking about him being Bob Ross, essentially, it's like, who decided that? You know, some of the choices for the characters, um, the actors that they cast for these characters, you just want to know what... Well, Mario. What they, what they, they see. Got, um, Chris Pratt. Yeah. that's Yeah, I never would have picked him. And uh, I'll be honest, in the Mario movie, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I thought everybody did a good job. I just personally didn't like Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, to be honest. Okay. Like, I didn't really like that. Yeah, but, there were a lot of people who felt that way. Really? Okay, so I'm not the only one? All right, good. Because I just, I don't know, it was just weird for me. I didn't, it didn't fit very well. I'm not me. really a Seth Rogen fan anyway, so. I mean, I'm not either, so, but I don't, I, I, I think even just without that being a factor, <clears throat> I just didn't think it worked. Everybody else was great. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think, which was surprising because I didn't, again, kind of like what we're saying, I would, never would have thought of Chris Pat Pratt for the role of Mario. And I will say that it did take, it did take me a little bit um, to get into the movie with him not having the accent. Um, it just felt off. It felt wrong. And then after a while, I was like, okay, you know, just trying to break free, break loose of what everything you know and give it a chance. And I, I think that's something that's kind of missing in the mentality of the viewers um, when it comes to movies these days is that we are definitely accustomed to holding on to what we love, what we know and love and being very skeptical, skeptical and, and rightly so, and, and critical of things that are different. And, um, there you go. Trying to find, you know, what? Oh, I got, Oh, my top oh I would thought you, I thought you were like saying, give me an amen <laughs> there. I was like, what? Let me say it again. Can I, there we go. Very nice. All right. So while R2 crawls his way across the canvas, we're going to go ahead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jeez. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's all good. We're going to then go in the opposite direction, go downwards. So come from underneath of here and just go downwards. But uh, yeah, I, I'm glad that 
that the movie worked out um despite all of the criticism and the the the, the concern that we the people had but <clears throat> i don't think it would have harmed the film if he had the accent Okay. I wonder what made them decide not to have the accent for Mario. He probably couldn't do it. Yeah. It might have been, though, to make it more distinguishable, though, because of the just difference in media. That's true. Maybe kids wouldn't have liked it as much, maybe? I don't know. You never know if when they, like you said, why they choose or do what they... What they choose to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Dan doesn't like it because there's not a lot of people in it. Because <laughs> he watches the movies for the people. Man, I bet he hates Homeward Bound. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was there a campfire in the movie? I don't know. Can a dog rub two sticks together? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Homeward Bound. <laughs> uh, so Rogue has a question. Is one doing Mario and one doing Luigi? I don't actually know, to be honest, uh, Rogue. Don't actually know. We don't know. We'll decide when we get there. We're deciding to go with the wind. Seize the day. Um, look both ways before we cross the street and ask the question of why. If if I do Luigi, he's just going to look like a big green bullet. So. Well, but you can always change the choice of green. And that would could. differentiate. <laughs> you don't have to. It is your painting. Heck, make it Waluigi. Make it Wario. I'm all right with that. It's essentially, they're kind of the same characters over and over again. We just lost with, our two. The subtle changes. Well, I hope. Oh, hang on. There we go. Very nice. Well, I hope his his feelings recover after what oh, I just said. I think Tom. I think Tom made his feelings hurt. No, it's possible. Tom has that way of doing it with people. <laughs> um, he's a very cruel, cold-blooded individual. Yes. No regard for other people and their feelings, obviously. <laughs> um, he says, so JT is painting peach. Peaches, got it. Um, surely you've heard the song Peaches, Peaches, Peaches by now, JT. What do you think? Yeah, of millions that? of peaches. Peaches for me. That peaches. song? In the Mario movie. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I have not. I thought you were talking about the Dead President song, Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that one. It's Mockany Draws. Whoops. Good morning. So he he was on my channel, and uh, we painted Mario the last time. That was the painting that uh, R2 was afraid to attempt. Um, justice for Tom. I stand with Tom. Oh, Mar oh, Maria just trying to gain brownie points, I see. Yeah, I know. Um She's like that. <laughs> She's not. But all right. So I don't know where you're at, R2, besides Arkansas. And he's an hour away from holidays. He's something. apparently an hour away. Right. Exactly. We will, of course, won't disclose the direct location. But how's it coming? Oh, we have a, a reveal here. A slow but sure one. There we go. I don't know why I'm in the middle of the top. It's so dark. A lot of times it has to do with the layering. Like if you if you put a thick amount of paint in one spot and not as much in the other, it looks like it's highlighted and shadowed, which is a nice nifty little trick when you can't afford to have a whole bunch of variety of paints. So, all right. <clears throat> are you, are, are, R2, are you doing the the full... Are you doing like me, like I'm in the sky? Or are you, are you cutting no, the was, bottom off? I was cutting the bottom off. Okay. Okay. Uh, Beard of Liberty, good morning. I'm gonna. I'll probably have to put like a shadow on mine. Um, a shadow in the sky. Yeah. All right, it's whatever. Up. You do it. You're you're an artist. I trust your instincts, even if I don't agree with them. Um, okay. <laughs> you can put little. You could put little clouds around it, which would be kind of cool too. Um, R two is coming from 1996. I see. Yes, that pixelation is real. Um, all right. So when you have this taken care of, we're just gonna put simple. Like I said, I'm gonna simplify um, this version of the painting versus what I did in my original one. So I'm gonna start with um, some shadowing here, just a little bit. Excuse me. With some highlighting here, just a little bit of it. I'm gonna take my green and get just a little bit, just a whisper of white. 
That may, Whisper might be, white. This might be a little bit more of a sneeze, but I'm going to dab it on my palette just a little bit. You can see over here in the corner so that the green and the white merge together just a little bit. And we might not necessarily need to add a shadow, which would eliminate some work for us, but we'll see how it goes. Never know. And we're just going to put a nice stroke, a nice shine right here on the side. Just come down. Try to be as straight as possible. I know that's hard for some people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to... It's okay if they're uneven. We don't necessarily need a perfect blend. And I'm going to go over it just a little bit. And just kind of keep it towards the center. I'm going to try to make it a little bit more even. A sneeze gesundheit. That's right. Danke. Ich danke Ihnen. Dude, on Instagram, so I was looking at a reel, and there was something about, oh, they're, they're making fun of the German, you know, language and comparing it to other foreign languages. And um, they were just saying, you know, why is it got to be such an aggressive language, right? And all the people in the, in the chat were talking about how aggressive German sounds. And uh, see you, Joker. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your errand. Hi, Joker. It's, he says it's un, uh, ungodly hot out here. Well, it's freaking weirdly cold out here, so I'll trade. Well, he's in Vegas, so yeah. Exactly. It's, it's hot. Um, but they were making fun of the German language and talking about how aggressive and harsh it sounds. And they're like, why has it got to be like that? And then there was this one person in there saying that, and, you, and everybody, we all know everybody's entitled to their opinions and everybody hears things differently and that's totally fine. But this guy was saying that you guys don't know what you're talking about. And... German is not that aggressive. You obviously just don't. It's something along the lines of you guys just don't hear it enough. It's a very American thing to say about foreign countries. They're like, what the freak? It <laughs> and is. And so I told him that. Well, so I just commented underneath of that and just said, you know, my family is from Germany, and even my own mother agrees that when they talk to each other, it sounds like they're barking at one another. Yeah. And um. And so commented back and said, well, maybe, maybe you need to learn German because any language that you don't, aren't familiar with always sounds, he didn't say aggressive, but he said something along the lines of aggressive. Number one, that's not true. You can listen to French and for the first time in your life and it, it never sounds aggressive. <laughs> I no, mean, it never. sounds, yeah. It yeah. never. Um, you TD's, can, you, TD's, um, he's German. What does he think about that? Yeah, my, uh, my in-laws are Filipino and they mm -hmm. all speak Ilcano um, or Tagalog. And that doesn't sound aggressive at all. It sounds like Ewoks talking, to be honest. See, there are just some languages that just do not sound aggressive. And um, I mean, like, and I, I know sometimes it's the way that you speak, but that's part of the language itself is the inflections and whatever. And so, like, I mean, my, na my neighbor is Iranian. And when she gets, you know, going with her, um people over there i've been to some of her little soirees oh there we go r2 let's have a look yes nice highlight and uh it's like i mean it sounds a little bit hostile right there and so somebody was like maybe try basically maybe try getting out of your zone and learning german you might appreciate it better and i was just like i mean he doesn't know but i was just like i grew up around germans my whole life i understand it but thanks for the tip. Yeah. <laughs> just like, I, mean, I just he probably thinks I, the same way about American language. Yeah. Have you ever listened? Let's have a look. Here we go. Nice. Oh, it looks like a little pocket. That's so great. A little pocket <laughs> in the sky. A couple arguing in Italian sounds far less harsh than of a German reading the news. This is, is very true. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and, and it's not to say that German can't be a beautiful language. It's just it's it, the, the, the consonants that they use are and the way that they're laid out. They're just they're just kind of harsh. That's not to say that they're mean people. It's just the language itself is not the most romantic language. in the world. Have you guys right. ever heard um, what English sounds like or what American sounds like to people who don't speak English? It's confusing because we have a lot of um, slang, slang, well, and I, different. Like we have, you know, the the theirs. Oh yeah. Just like 
Like which one do you use? Or they There's, are, or they's. Um, love is another one where we use that all the time. We speak predominantly in slang of some kind, some kind of colloquialism. And then there's slang of slang. Slang of slang all the time. You know, how do you and explain? Yeah, and if you're in two different, like New Yorkers talk different than someone in California. Of course. I mean, how do you explain to a foreigner um, hanging out? I don't know. You hmm. you have to think about it. I mean, like we get together. The gathering. And <laughs> yeah, we gather and talk. So yeah. how do you know? But, but you know, when a lot of times I I'll ask, you know, or my relatives will ask, what does that mean? And it's like, what does that mean? <laughs> how do you? <laughs> Like we all know what it means because we use it on a regular basis, but and we know the context, but to explain context sometimes it's difficult. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here um, with our white and just kind of do a, a gentle stroke here uh, towards the middle of the uh, pipe there, um, just to like I said, create this nice little highlight, a whisper again. If you need to, you can always rotate your paintbrush. So it's not the width of it. It's just uh, the fine line like so. You could just do this. Mine's a little bit too bright. So I'm going to try to dampen it a little here. Soften it, I should say. There we go. And I think to make it match, I'm just going to go back and retouch some of the portion down here. There we go. Don't want to get too fancy with it. It is what it is. When you get the pipe finished, we're going to put our brush inside of our cup of water, swizzle it around, and set it to the side for later. I'll tell you now one thing, you, this paint that I bought is really water-based, like it goes right away. Does it? Yeah, the, the formula for the different paints... Um, it dilutes like really fast. It is mind-boggling sometimes. You know, I, I, I'm an art teacher, I teach kids online and how to paint and things like that, and you know, of course I tell them, I don't tell them specifically what brand to buy or the specific color, I just say, you know, blue, yellow, red, whatever the case might be. Now you could say the Kelly green, iguana. Kelly green. <laughs> yeah, I don't go into the really strange and bizarre names that they have for the colors. And so um, sometimes, you know, they're painting and I my background is already finished and it's been 12 minutes. And they're like, my background's not dry yet. And it's like, how is it not dry yet? And uh, oh, oh, we have nice, very nice, excellent. Oh, JT going to show off too. Nice highlight. It's got a nice kind of chalky animation going, like animation style. I like that. Cool. You you guys like what you have so far? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay. So you're, while, you're a good uh, teacher, so I'm sure the kids do really good with you. They they amaze me sometimes. They they create things that I and 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 stylize things in a way that I wish I could because again everybody brings you know something unique to the table and um, I love it. For sure. Thank you, JT. I try to be a good teacher. Um, you know, have you I, ever I, done the, uh, the like um, where you go to a store and you paint like a like a bucket or like a cup or like a like or a canvas. ceramic something? Like yeah, um, actually, the shop that I used to work at, which is where I got my starting with um, lessons like this. Um, yeah, we had canvases, but then we started having like the clay pots, the wooden signs little figurines and things like that as well. Hey, gaming or what? Good morning. I always thought the wine and painting was fun because you know someone could, can get pretty oh, yes, inebriated at the end. <laughs> uh, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, so I'll, I'll, let me tell you a fun story about that in a second here. So using our stencil here, let's just help ourselves out by go ahead and creating some of the elements in Mario or Luigi's face, whoever you're doing. 
And uh, just to give us a guideline, right? We don't want to do a whole bunch. We want to have some liberty here, but we want to at least have the nose and the hat somewhat established. So I like to start with the nose. And if you look at it, there's a little bit of a gap between the nose and the uh, gloves. And I apologize if you can hear my dog's whining. He's desperate for attention right now. But uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, these are all going to get covered up with paint. We just kind of want a guideline. So I'm going to... He he's sounds so of, sad. I know. He's a very pathetic sounding individual. Gimli, come here. Let me see if I can. Sounds super sad. He, he, he's like that. Gimli, come here. No, you're not Gimli. Come here. Gimli, come here. If you want love and attention, you have to come here. Thank you. Come here, good boy. You want to say hello to people? You want some love? There we go. Say hi. That's <laughs> very cute. How old is he now? <laughs> they are almost a year. Wow. We have two of them, right? Yep. Oh, here's the other one who's always desperate for attention. <laughs> are they brothers or sisters or uh, brother and sister? I mean, they're technically not from the same litter, but um, you know, they're in the same household. So it's Nori and Gimli. They look like Ewoks. They do look like little Ewoks. Yeah, we. Yeah. All right. Are you content? Are you satisfied? Nope. 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 Ah! Yeah. <sighs> I went... are... They're they're a mess. We went for a walk yesterday. They don't do very well walking. Well, it's funny because he loves he loves the outdoors. He would live out there if he could all day every day. So mm -hmm. we went for a walk around the neighborhood, and you have to literally drag her. You have to drag her around the neighborhood. But as soon as we go home, she is like a bullet. He is like a bullet leaving the house, but he will actually roll over and let me drag him by his uh, harness there back into the house. Like he just refuses to go home. <laughs> he's he's a mess, but he's uh, he's a cute one. He's a cute one for sure. All right, guys, is that enough love for now? Will that last? Yes. All right. It has to, because we're busy. All right, so we've got our nose, and uh, so for our hat here, um, I'm going to, you know, we have our ears, so I'm just going to kind of bring this in again, just to give a guideline, have an idea of where things are at. And we know the eyes are above here, so I'm just going to kind of make a line right here and right here. And my grandmother is calling me. <laughs> Hope she's all right. So I'm going to just come up and we're going to do kind of like this light bulb looking thing here. Shape almost just kind of it's OK if it's messy and sketchy. That's just how it works. We just need to have a, a guideline here. OK. And. Uh, Apparently, my facial hair is in the chat. Good morning. Nobody <laughs> invited you. Um, there's a reason we get rid of that. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. We're going to switch over to our half-inch flat brush here. And we're going to fill in the face. We didn't really want to do a whole bunch of detail in the face because it's all going to get colored into one, one color. But um, let me wait with pursuing the face in there. I'm going to mix my colors. So if you, R2 already has flesh tone. So he's, this really is funny, almost like in a competition, a race way, because like I'm creating all of my colors. But, uh, and JT has some of the colors that R2 doesn't have. And R2 has some of the colors that JT doesn't have. <laughs> and uh but i'm gonna go ahead and take some yellow take just a hint of red get some white and start creating some skin tones here here we go it's a little bit mustardy so i need to add a little more pink to it i like how you actually have a stencil I actually have what? A stencil. Like not a stencil. I'm sorry. What what is that? A paint palette or something? Yeah, a palette. Painting palette. 
Of course I have one. I'm I'm a painter. I'm an artist. I'm an action figure. <laughs> All right. So what are your guys, since you do, you know, the movies of your, let's put it that way. Um, what would you say is your favorite 80s movie? Or, or let me maybe make this a little bit easier. Maybe like three of your favorite 80s movies. I'll let Rick go first. <laughs> um... I would say Big Trouble Little China. Okay, I've never seen that. Oh, it's so good. Um, uh, Empire Strikes Back and ah. um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Nice, nice. I approve of these. Uh, chat, if you want to let us know what your top three 80s movies are as well, I so would it, love to see. Yeah, so it goes, um, I count them as one, but the Back to the Future series. And oh, then, interesting. Um, all three? Really? Well, I count them as one movie. Uh, mm. Top Gun would Ugh. be on there. And then um, the third one would probably be one of the movies that Rick decided to do when I was uh, moving. Um, that's Fierce Viewer's Day Off. So. Oh, uh, really? Okay. I've seen that. <laughs> wasn't necessarily my favorite, but it's possible because of the fact that I was younger when these movies... I either wasn't born or I was just much younger when these movies came yeah, I was, out. I was young, too, and most of them I watched after they you know, came out, but um, yeah. I had an older sister that watched okay. a lot of these movies. So. Um, so what is it about... What is it about these movies that make it into your top three category? Mm. Well, a lot. Well, a lot of my movies make you kind of. Well, not a lot of them, but Back <laughs> to the Future is kind of make you think of like your decisions. It's kind of like make you, just makes you a little like. Has a good story. It um, there is some action to it, but there's also some consequences um, on what he does. Um, and of course, yeah, how he corrects it. So that's always good to. Seeing a movie as a character. That's grow. why you like that movie. Like that's what made you. Yeah, speaking of someone who likes movies with people, it does have a lot of people in it. So it does have a <laughs> lot of people. Uh, Ta this is not true. Tabitha likes femme bromance like Tombstone. I hated that movie. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, <laughs> fill in this here. What we're going to do first is the nose. Okay, again, with brushstroke pattern being important, this helps separate it from the face. So I'm just going to take my half inch brush here carefully and just kind of rotate, make like a little little archway, little rainbow style here, and just carefully fill that in. Hey, we do not chew on books in this household. Thank you. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's right. I saw you. <laughs> these these dogs. I'll tell you what. All right. Are animals so, like the darndest things. Like you, you love them, right? And then they do something where you like literally hate them. <laughs> or you, you make it makes you question, like why, why? Yeah, why? like moving <laughs> across two states with animals is by far the hard, one of the hardest things I've ever done. Really? Where they, we well, put them in a car. Well, we had cats, so oh, okay. Our, our, unfortunately, our dogs, bit. our dog passed away. Aww. before we moved but um like um they they hate the car the cats oh of it's course just, there's no imagine like there. driving 10 hours with meowing just, and then they're like so stressed out they don't even know where they're at because they're in a hotel room yeah. or a car and then they lived in like three different spots in like a less than three weeks and it was very stressful mm. for them it is they're very stressful. they get very used to their surroundings or you know they're used to things and we just like uprooted him. <laughs> so. Oh my god, goodness, yeah, like it. It we we traveled when I was younger. We went from Maryland to Las Vegas in a truck with a Great Pyrenees caged in the back of the truck. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, poor guy. You know, there's no exercising. You can't really sleep because the car is rocking, and then 
you know, you have to make sure you take him and feed him and then water him mm -hmm. and all that. It's it's a lot. Uh, and we're going to go ahead. Once we get the nose in, then we're going to do kind of the same thing with the pipe. We're going to do in the opposite direction and fill in the space here. So that way we can see the difference between the nosy and the rest of the face. Maria mm -hmm. says 80s Labyrinth, of course, Star Wars series and Willow. Honorable mentions, never ending story, Batman, Top Gun. Sorry, I can't choose. It is hard. There are so many good movies, unique movies that it, it asking me the same question would be difficult, mostly because I don't really pay attention what year movies are made. <laughs> but uh, I will say that Labyrinth was definitely a movie that I I loved as a kid. I don't know what it is about that movie that so many people love, but um david bowie just did a fantastic job and as i got older and you you know you discover the internet and you see people sharing things they're like a lot of these gals you know when they were younger had this infatuation with him and i think that's really interesting that it's it's so common and he was the bad guy and he was kind of a weirdo and kind of a creep but there was something alluring about him that captivated the audience as much as it did the character in the story. I think that's pretty good acting and storytelling on behalf of the, the cast and crew there. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that movie was, was, was good. I wish it was a book. Like I, I actually went online to see if that was ever, a, if it was a book first or ever made into a book. And, oh. uh, it's not, but I think it would make such a it would make a really interesting book. Jennifer Connelly's in that movie. She was yes, pretty popular beautiful. at that time. You know, it's interesting about Jennifer Connelly, and she's married to Paul Bent Bent. How you say it? Bentney? Bentley? Bentney. Bentney. She he had such a huge crush on her. If this story is to be believed, he had a huge crush on her, and he determined to make her his wife. <laughs> and they ended up getting married. Uh, so don't say it's not possible, people. If you if you believe it, you can achieve it. <laughs> um, so I've filled in the face here. I know you guys are probably, you know, taking your time and making it beautiful. To help us separate, again, the nose from the rest of the face, yep. I'm going to take this color and get just a little bit of white, blend it on my palette here, kind of like what we did with the pipe here, and just put... Just a little bit of a highlight here on the front of the nose. Because it just makes it also a little bit more realistic because we know that whatever's closest to the sun is most reflective. Dead. And so it just kind of helps. If you wanted to, you could even put a little bit of a streak down the middle of the face where that would you know, essentially be in between the eyes. Just kind of blend it there. You don't have to if you don't want to. Whoops. Oh, no. How did that happen? I've got blue in my brush. Well, we'll cover it up. It happens. <laughs> it happens. Okay. So you guys got anything interesting coming up on your channels here in the future? Uh, I guess we're just going to go ahead and say, Rick, you go first, because that seems to be the reoccurring theme here. <laughs> Yeah, apparently. Uh, well, we just recently hit uh, 300 subs on our channel. So Excellent. Congrats. Very excited about that. Plus, um, our next episode is going to be uh, our 50th uh, movie review. Awesome. So um, we are still kind of working on what we're going to do for that. But we mm -hmm. do have an idea. But uh, that will be well, not this Monday because it's a holiday. But... Uh, what is that? June 5th. We will be. Okay. We'll be back. Yeah. So. Excellent. Okay. So we've got something special coming up on June 5th for a celebration. A celebration yeah. And then, episode. Um, yeah. And then we, um, yeah. So there, there's that. And then on my separate channel, we're doing, uh, like I said, I've been doing it for almost, it'd be one year, June 1st. So that would be awesome. So this Wednesday, I'm having some, um, some groups of uh, a panel on to do something. I don't know yet, but uh, just to celebrate 
Yeah. I, I've always enjoyed, uh, R2 is going to chuckle at this. I've always enjoyed the game nights that we, uh, <laughs> I say, I knew yeah, it. I've done I those in a while. <laughs> um, I, I like to always say I'm not competitive. It's not about winning. It's about trying when it, for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We haven't done one of those in a while, to be honest. There might be a reason. Maybe I'm the reason that there's no more. Well, we would invite people on and thinking, you know, they would be, it would be fun, but there would always be one person that was really good and just obliterate everyone else. I feel like Danny from Comics and Cosmetics comes to mind. She needs, she needs to know everything. <laughs> She's uh she's she's a very knowledgeable person. She's got some awesome stuff going on on her channel too. Um, she just recently released some kind of like documentary about um, prosthetic legs in the industry, and uh, it's a pretty fascinating watch. But it, it is fun though. I tell you what to to kind of compete, you know, with your your peers and all this kind of stuff in a in a mild competition, of course, and. Uh, just make people laugh and um, learn along the way. The frustrating thing, and that's what I told R2, I said the frustrating thing, and this is where I probably, oh, were you showing us something, R2? No, it's okay. You're good. Um, the frustrating thing is when we were doing, like, the hand gesture or, like, you know, I know it, and oh, the internet, yeah. you know, the internet causes it to be between all the different people, you know, a second or two, too late, too soon, whatever the case might be. And you're like, I know I lifted my hand first, but on your end, it doesn't look that way. And for me, that's the frustrating part. Yeah. And um, so maybe that's where it seems like I'm really competitive, you know, because I get my frustration <laughs> I think if we were to ever do trivia game night again, it would have to be um, where everyone submits their answer, and then uh, we then tell them who who got it right. Kind of, kind of like um, the first portion of Jeopardy, where you get to pick the category and then just let that person answer instead of letting everybody buzz in, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just has to be that way. Or I was like, maybe you can message in the private chat, but I don't know if that still would take too long. Um, you just well, we did a thing called like. Jackbox TV, and that actually works that way. Where it, it knows what's submitted first, and then... Oh, it that, does? That's, like, okay. that's off of a... You, you stream that off of your uh, game system. Oh, I'm gonna have to look into that. That'd be kind of fun. I think maybe we should do that on Inside the Booth Game Night. <laughs> <laughs> that should be fun. It should be really fun. Okay, so I don't know where everybody's at. I'm just gonna go ahead and progress. If you're still working on one section more than the other, whatever, it's all good. I'm gonna rinse my brush, dry it off on my towel, try not to have blue in it this time. I don't know where that came from, but Kind of like what R2 was saying with his hands. Like, it just kind of gets everywhere. You can't really help it. Um, and I'm going to take my red, and I'm going to paint the hat. Pretty simple, straight up, straightforward. Just going ahead and painting it. Painting the roses red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what would, what would you say is maybe um, the goal or the vision for your channels individually? Uh, for mine, it's just to have fun and mm -hmm. um, get to know new people in the in the world of the um, internet. Whoever mm -hmm. has a YouTube channel or whatever or a Twitch yeah. channel, just to get to know them and talk to them, and then find out you know why they why they decided to either do the channel or you know what their other what other things they like. Yeah. Like that. So I'm already doing red, so we're both painting Mario. <laughs> <laughs> the decision has been finalized. There ain't no turning back. Uh, I think the flesh paint that I had is old and bad because I'm having big time trouble with it. Okay. Trying well, to get it to spread around as nice as possible, and it's bad. Have you added maybe literally, literally, literally a drop of water to it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did okay. That Maybe you and... too much. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. I I kind of think this is older paint. And uh, yeah, that happens. Didn't you just buy oh. it? No, that was paint that I actually I had. I found it. Um, 
<laughs> it's been there since little Spidey was born. <laughs> It's not that um, old, but it's a couple years old. So Well, you can always make more flesh tone or new flesh tone by adding white, yellow, and red. And you'll want very little red at the beginning of it all and just gradually add to it um, until you get a tone that you enjoy, that you that is eye-pleasing. Um, there's always that. <laughs> so... Um, before I move the Texas tab, but I'll just let you know that I used to be like three hours behind you. And yeah. uh, whenever you would do these, it would be early in the morning. Mm -hmm. I always, I would, I would have, I was, my kid would be eating breakfast and I always had like a cup of coffee watching part of your painting stream. I've always enjoyed them. <laughs> oh, so, thank you. I, yeah. um, I enjoy these too. You know, like you were saying, having fun. It's, it's, it's about having fun. And it's also, there's such a thrill. There's such a joy from the joys of painting from teaching other people something new. Um, I am not a mother, but I can somewhat imagine what it's like when you teach something to somebody and you see their face light up. It's like magic, you know, like I can do this. You Is know, that magic R2? <laughs> the magic. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, look at that. All right, you want to make sure it touches the forehead as well. Yeah, I know. I'm working on that. Just oh, okay. I, I didn't know if you did that on purpose report. or not. No, it's totally fine. Um, I just wanted to, I, you know, as the teacher, I must instruct you on things that are obvious. So R2 never answered where he thinks our channel should go. Well, I figured oh. since he was taking his time, I was just going to progress with mine. But uh, well, but so we'll, we'll 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 circle back. Let's pull a Jens hockey R two. Tell us about uh, it. Well, it's 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 the same as as JT's own channel. I mean, we do this for fun and um, just getting to hang out with our friends, um, especially too. Like you know, for me, I I did actually leave California uh, almost three years ago. So kind of coming out to Arkansas, and outside of just I have some family out here. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. have really any friends like I did before. So, mm -hmm. you know, getting to, to, to do YouTube is, is, is a way for me to hang out with my friends that I've met um, yeah. during this time period. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it is pretty R2's neat. R2 is my internet best friend. Internet best friend. <laughs> it, 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 is, is, yeah. it is pretty neat how <laughs> the internet... You know, it's like it's just like anything. It can be used for good or for evil. And so while it's something that has been utilized to divide people, it's also been definitely a method, especially during, you know, and after 2020 of allowing people to gather and be creative in relationships or, you know, hanging out styles and whatever the case might be. Yeah. Trivias, podcasts for gaming podcasts for movie reviews, you know, art channels like mine and Makani Draws and others. And um, it is, it's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing. Um, I mean, I've, I've met so many, so many interesting people <laughs> because of Twitter and because of YouTube, you know, and so doing even shows like this and, and it's also, you know, allowing you to push out of your comfort zone a little bit too, to reach out to people that maybe you never thought, would be willing to come or be interested to come onto your channel um, and have fun and just learn that we're all pretty much the same in essence. You know, we're all just trying things. We're all just doing our best that we can and just trying to laugh and live a little bit along the way for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, if everybody that said they were going to come onto my channel comes onto my channel, um, I'll be honored and so excited. And it really doesn't matter if it's what we might call the bigger YouTubers or the little YouTubers. Again, we're all just people trying. And from painting perspective, it is just so fun to see people be excited about what they create or teaching them and allowing them to learn and understand that they, oh my gosh, Gimli, <laughs> that, they, that they can create something. And... There's just people get told all the time throughout their life that they cannot do things, that they're not good at things. Or if they're not told that, they're given the um, 
you like you infer that right from social mm -hmm. constructs and whatnot and so having this channel and seeing people of all different kinds of backgrounds kind of have the same mesmerizing effect of like that worked you know that i could do this uh, that's just it's just such a happy moment as the teacher to be able to witness that yeah um for sure uh, like i said i'm not a parent but I, I've often heard about, you know, when, you know, when you're not a parent and you get into your thirties and you just kind of wonder like, do I want kids? You know? <laughs> and uh, you talk to other people and they're like, oh man, but the magic of seeing your kids explore the world for the first time and the stuff that you've gotten accustomed to, and they see it as something amazing for the first time. I yeah. can, can believe that in a way when it comes to teaching art is somewhat the same feeling, the same reaction. It's like seeing adults sp specifically seeing adults get excited that they too created something even, and I'm just be honest with you, even if as from an artistic standpoint, it's horrible is not even the point. Really the point yeah, of this you. channel is not really about making sure that you guys create something beautiful. It's more about giving you the experience to expand um, as a person and, and see new things for yourself for yeah. sure. Yeah. I think we lost our tube again. Uh, he looks very confused. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't want to progress if he's not here. I know he was struggling with his flesh tones. Yeah. Dance. Dance. I wonder what's going on. Um, so yeah, he's usually not bad. on the hat, then where do we move on to next? So on the hat portion, we're going to create, uh, in, in the opposite effect of what we did with the, um, Gimli, you're going to have to go down. Uh, get my arm exercise. He vanished again. He vanished again. So instead of doing highlights on the hat, we're just going to darken it up a little bit here to create this under portion of the brim, right? Okay. So um, I'm actually going to switch out. I'm not going to use my half inch brush anymore. Okay. We're pretty much done with that from here on out. I think it'll just be easier for us to do things. There he is. With the detail brush. Sorry. Did you get all that, R2? <laughs> I don't think so, but <laughs> sorry I'm having so much trouble with uh, my internet. Well, technol I always say technology is great until it doesn't work. So I'll try, yeah. I'll try not to hold it against you, but... Uh, if you are able to get the flesh tone and you're able to get the hat taken care of, we're going to be switching um, over to our detail brush. Where are you at? I need to, I need to let my, my flesh paint uh, dry a little bit. Um, okay. Well, you don't have it's... to. We're not. You don't have to let the, the flesh tone dry um, in order to paint the red. Okay. Yeah. Um, and anyway, the red would overpower the flesh tone anyway. <laughs> um, so go ahead and paint the hat red there. And I was just telling JT, we're going to create the under, the under portion, sir. The shadows of the we're hat. We're going to do the shadow, the under portion of the brim of the hat there. Again, sorry that my doggy is so whiny, but, uh, you know, they just want love like everybody else in the world. They just. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so what he's doing right now is trying to get the other dog to play with him. <laughs> he's just that sad, huh? I think he's just that bored, which is so funny because he usually could just sleep his life away during the day. But uh... So when I painted the hat pure red, right? And so um, I'm going to... Oh my goodness. I'm going to take my red and my blue and a little bit of yellow to create kind of a brown color. More red than anything. Unless, of course, you're like JT and possibly brought brown to the game. Well, I used actually a little bit of black. Uh, I was afraid you were going to say that. That will definitely work. It will definitely work, but it can be very strong, very contrasting. So that's why I'm just creating basically a reddish brown color. Yeah. It's hard to teach artists to follow the rules. Am I right? <laughs> there are no rules in baseball. Or how does that go? Um, no crying in baseball. No crying, no crying. in baseball. <laughs> 
Well, I'm it's, I'm gonna just switch things around. So when we do the brim, if I've got my little example up here, it doesn't go completely from side to side. We basically kind of line it up with where the ears would be, and then just drag it. And uh, for the top portion to have that separation, we're going to have the line work later on, if we so choose. Not everybody likes to outline. I personally don't like outlining, but um, sometimes, sometimes I do, and sometimes people like that. Oh, my goodness. My hand is just not steady at this angle. <clears throat> Here we go. I would have brought like bought a bunch of brushes. <laughs> I try to keep things really simple for my guests because I know that not everybody's gonna like reuse the supplies, so I try to make it pretty basic. Um, but you know, Our, Maria says that uh, R two is extremely concentrating. I know. <laughs> Uh, she also says that's cheating for an artist. What's cheating? Tell us. Are you getting on JT's case? Please do it. Somebody's got to. I'm not talking. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, and we will want the hat to dry completely before we do any other details using it. And uh, using black. Ah, yes. That's the easy way out for sure. Using black. I have since learned this myself. I forgot that I had brown. <gasps> no, no. No, no. I'll forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know if I'm talking to JT or my dog. <laughs> hey, I will swat you with this glove. Yes, I will. Hey. Well, she doesn't listen very well. So <laughs> she oh, here you go. It didn't come out too bad. Aggressive. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, hang on. Ah, yeah. Oh, that's good colors. Yes, yes. Very nice. It didn't come out too bad. Yeah. I think if I did like a real strong outline of the brim, once we do the top, I think it would be fine. Oh, yeah. Definitely will separate things. Um, R2, where are you at? How's it going? Uh, I need to do the darker portion of the hat. You sound stressed out. I am. Uh, <laughs> uh, was, 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 How are you doing? It was red, uh, and then what was the other colors? <laughs> so if you want to make darker red, we're just yeah. going to take a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow and mix that together. So if you look here um, at my palette, I was able to create this color using mostly red, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of yellow. Okay. So we'll get we'll let R2 catch up to us, and then we'll move on. The next I don't want to tell JT what the next step is going to be because he's just going to jump the gun and like go for it. But <laughs> I am going to rinse my brush as thoroughly as I can, pat it on my towel. And like I said, we want the face and the hat and everything to be nice and dry before we move on. So we're going to be doing the gloves and that's just white. But again, we want to be intentional with the brush stroke pattern here. And so I will be using the brush and following the curvature of the hand, right? Follow that curvature. Are you doing pure white or just a mix? Yep, right now, just pure white. Okay. Okie day. Yeah. I don't want to move on without R2, though. Leave no man behind. Well, I'm already moving. <laughs> that, oh, man. Sorry, bud. <laughs> J JT's taking Joker's, like, or Maria's uh, thing seriously. Our rogue and Maria's bet there. <laughs> So do you guys have any painting experience prior to this? We know that JT is an artist with graphic design, but digital art and uh, tangible art like this can be can be very different. So, so do you guys have you experience? You would think with that, you? but I actually went to an art school. Mm -hmm. And the first year, before they even allowed you to do anything digital, you had to take um, the fundamental classes. So like a lot of... of course. Painting, drawing, and uh, uh, like, yeah, a lot of painting and drawing. 
there's a lot yeah of well that going. makes sense you know you kind of need to understand how it works before you pr- progress you yeah know? because same people nowadays they just think digital like you just kind of throw things together and mm-hmm. it, it comes together but there is still Magic. some design or art when you're doing that because you have to conceptually like make it look good you can't just yeah you can easily tell a logo that has some thought to it from one that maybe was just thrown together oh yeah for sure especially if you understand composition balance color placement all color choices all of that stuff for sure yeah um well since r2 is concentrating we'll, we will let him focus on that jt what are you i'm going to ask the the big question in the room as a digital artist as an artist what are your thoughts on ai art um it's gonna have its place Uh, i know Mm -hmm. that because there are some really good what do you say uh, artists that um can maybe make something out it's just another tool right if you use it as another tool to where you start off with something and you kind of flesh out the the um the indifferences or the issues with it you can you could probably do a, a pretty good job but if um, you just solely do an art or ai where you're not really putting any thought you're just saying i want this and this and this then mm-hmm. it's i don't i wouldn't think it well i mean then it's right. not really art anymore it's really just a programming right yeah programming yeah yeah concept um because art is instinctual you know art is from within onto something with something and so yeah yeah mm -hmm. like for example like when a lot of the logos that i've done people don't know what they actually want (laughs) and then they'll they'll come to me and say this is you know i don't know what i want but i just want something kind of neat okay (laughs) (laughs) yes the most vague thing possible what I would normally do is I, if they have a YouTube channel, I'd go to that YouTube channel and I would watch a few of their videos, get an idea who they are, what they like. Yes. If I know them personally, I would kind of grab from that. So, so one good example was um, was uh, Maria's, where I knew she liked storytelling. I knew she liked cats. And I know she liked to um, crochet. So I wanted to put all those together and... You know, and that gave, that came out with the logo where she has the cat reaching for the stars because she's always telling stories, um, mm-hmm. mimic people, you know, reaching up uh, to that type of yeah dream. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, there's there's a lot goes on with that. Um, like you said, our AI art. I can see the benefits of it from like a business standpoint. I was talking about that with somebody um, a while ago, and. You know, now you have AI generated thumbnails and all of this kind of stuff. And while that's really cool, fancy and neat, it it does kind of rob an opportunity of somebody else to create something, something unique, something individual. And um, but they were saying, you know, a lot of (laughs) people are so sad. They're saying that, you know, it's time management like and also for some people i was also seeing that they were saying well it saves me money i don't have money to get a concept artist and it's like yeah i don't i don't spend money on a concept artist right yeah (laughs) it well because you are the concept artist um but it you know, it goes into this full circle thing where all of the new technology, because I hear people also saying that it's stealing jobs, it's robbing opportunities. And I was having this conversation with somebody else um, on the internet, of course, and they were saying, well, then that if that's how you stand on this, then you also need to take away factories because uh, those have stolen jobs from seamstresses. And I'm like, I, I get it. Like, I see where you're coming from. And we're in this cycle now where technology has definitely benefited us and made us progressive and and faster and all this kind of stuff but there is something lost any t- I, I do believe that anytime there's progression there is something that is also lost and it's not necessarily a bad thing but i do think it's kind of culturally sad is that we're losing in some ways we're losing old skills right yeah and 
that's just part of civilization. Things will move and things will get forgotten, but it also does open opportunities for different kinds of jobs because then you have to have the people that are working behind the scenes with the programming, with you know, coding and whatever to create AI art and all of this kind of stuff. Fundamentally, I would say I'm against it, but in a practical sense, I can see where it is beneficial and mm. useful for people who are on a tight budget and are business savvy. Like they don't want to wait for somebody to try to create something for them. They want it there. They want it now because time is money. And, um, right. And let's see. Backyard Tardis Hello says really good AI art requires at least a thousand descriptor words of what you want. So it's not without, um, in input. And as JT said, it's best when touched up. Yeah. And it's the other thing too, is that in my, in my argument is that AI art descriptive when you're, when you're speaking into the computer and it generates this information or you're typing it mm -hmm. in, it is no longer artwork, but it is a visual representation of literature. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would agree. I, I would say that you can say that I, I get a little nitpicky about these things. You can say poetry and stuff like that. Forgive me, Maria. Maybe you have a different perspective and I'd love to hear it. But they say that that's art. In a nutshell, it kind of is, but it's not like, but it, and, and for, for me, it's more of like a literary art sense. You know, it's kind of like right. the branches that go off. It's, it's not visual art. It is, you know, auditory uh, or whatever the case might be. Oh, I gotta um, say, it's bad. I've had lots of trouble here getting the. Uh, let's try. have a look, R two. Let's have a look. It looks pretty I don't good. Think it it's looks bad. Yeah, I think you can wrong. recognize uh, who that is. For sure. All you're right. So hard on yourself. Exactly. Look, no confidence is key here. Um. So, all right, R two. The next step should be fairly easy. We're just gonna fill in these clouds here, the little hands with white, sure. but we're just gonna. We're going to go in the direction of the hands, like, right, it's, it's curved. So we see here it's it's curved. So that just means we're going to add a curve like so. But, uh, yeah, if with anything, I think it's good that there's always going to be people out there, whether it's soap making, whether it's cooking, um, painting, all these kinds of things. There's always going to be people that hang on to the old fashioned traditional method of creating something. And I don't think yeah. it'll ever get lost for sure. Not, but it might not be. And, you know, things kind of have a habit of coming back in full circle too, because you'll have, um, you'll have fads, of course, too. traditional fads, yeah. like suddenly all everybody's really into making hand making. You guys remember back in like 2000s, all of a sudden they I mean, you guys are guys, but I'm sure you saw it. Everybody was bejeweling their clothes. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, in a way, that's a it's a kind of a a branch off of the sewing thing. And then you had, you know, your easy bake ovens and those make it made another comeback. So cooking was kind of coming, becoming popular again. And uh, now when you've got all these really cool cooking competitions and all that stuff, and it just kind of breeds a brand new generation of interest for things. Um, Maria uh -huh. says, storytelling and reciting poetry. I would say it's art with words, which is a form of art as well, but you can't reduce art to only that. Yeah, I mean, I you know, art can have a broad sense of it. You know, it's like when they say dancing is, a, is art. I don't agree with that. I would say it's an art form. It's a it's maybe, but I or you can create it into an art form. But dance to me is dance, and I think it's beautiful and it's wonderful. I don't know if I would categorize it per right. se as art. I would um, agree. It's it's yeah. um, it's an art form, just like AI is going to be an art form. Like it's a, a mm -hmm. way of and, and like something. the poetry and the literature. It's it's not art, but it's in art form <laughs> yeah and, and, and then again that's not reducing it to anything you know people people can say well like that's like a negative aspect because you don't think it's art no it's just more of like looking at it from its definition <laughs> from its viewpoint like it's not about minimizing it it's more about for me personally what is the what is the exactness of it all um art is the expression of humans which have different dimensions yes yes i agree 
I, it's one of those I, subjects that kind of is, you never see those, those staircase things that go in, uh, not exactly a circle, but kind of that triangle staircase that yeah. kind of goes up and then it goes down and somehow it, it just keeps going in a perpetual cycle. I believe that that's one of those conversations that definitely could be just a never ending staircase. Um, um, you know, even, um, even a YouTube channel could be um, AI. Mm hmm. Well, and I, I just I guess I also for me, putting aside my own personal beliefs on AI, I also don't like it in general because it's dangerous. And we have already seen that people have abused it and it is going to cause problem. I personally believe it's going to cause problems in the future for journalism for the entertainment industry. I've already heard of people taking other people's faces, AI generated stuff and creating pornography with it without consent. And yeah. that's dangerous to think that people have this capacity now. And so, you know, they're going to start using that in journalism. They're already creating, you know, misinformation out there. Um, false information about celebrities and politicians and all this kind of stuff. And it's only going to get more easy. It's going to just get easier for people to manipulate things like that for personal agenda. And I find that very dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. So do I. Yeah, there was some um, AI photo that was going around the other day that was freaking everybody out. And it was a, yeah. It was a tech on some U.S. building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then because it looks so realistic, you don't know who to believe. And and then and then you have the the bigger problem where then you have a lack of trust that you know we, nobody knows who to believe anymore. And so we're all just kind of walking around angry because we don't know what to believe. We become angry and then we become apathetic because well, it's like, well, you just can't trust anybody. It's just kind of like our politicians, you know, people don't vote as much as they used to anymore because like, well, who can you trust? It's because it's created this apathy. Um, and I believe that will happen. We have seen that happen with journalism and things like that. It, it, it's a dangerous slope there. And a lot of people aren't willing to do their own information search, but it can be difficult to do that because everything's on the internet and you just can't really believe everything you read on the internet. I mean, so said Abraham Lincoln. So um, Maria says art is the express what well, she says then we would have to define art in a more philosophical point of view I, I think so probably and again I think that would make for a really interesting conversation that would really just go in circles because it's going to really boil down to people's interpretations you're going to um, hate me but I've, I've jumped like super far ahead <laughs> well you didn't have to do that for me to hate you JT to be honest <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> just kidding mine looks kind of um, like a baby Mario Oh, he does well yeah they all look like baby mario until they get the uh um mustache on i thought about that too i think if these movies where artists spend an eight hour day and only accomplish a few seconds if ai can speed that up make it cheaper so movies don't have to make a billion and stop crunch and abuse of vfx artists um there's always pros and cons to progression that's yeah. for sure I think we can see that in society, too. We've made things easier on ourselves, so people are lazier. Um, they're not quite as motivated. Uh, not everybody, but a lot of people. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's kind of like the, what they what the microwave did for us. The microwave makes it easier, makes it faster. So we become impatient, and we've lost the ability and the skills to know how to make a meal. We just, just pop it in the microwave, that kind <laughs> of mentality. Um, R2, where are you? Uh, still on the hands, but I'm almost done. okay. No, that's perfectly fine. I was just gonna say, when you get the hands finished, hopefully, the rest of the flesh tones are pretty much dry, and um, we're gonna create the eyes after this, and we're gonna work kind of bounce around the face. We're almost done here, but we're gonna be bouncing around the face here to finish off our lovely little painting. We're gonna start off with the whites of the eyes. Let that dry. And while we let that dry, we're going to create more brown so that we can do all of the hair on the head.
uh, Maria says, whoa, what a roast. Lost. She says, lost at the end of it. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that's referring to. <laughs> lost. We're all lost. Some of us are lost. People, a society, or we all, your, your favorite teddy bear. I don't know. <laughs> um, something is lost for sure. Um, we're doing the facial hair. Yes. Well, we're going to be doing the, you've already done the eyes. Yeah, we're going to do the facial hair. <laughs> we're gonna do this. I'm, I'm um, just, sorry. I'm just, I was just going. You were just going. It's okay. There's always that one kid in the class. Um, Backyard Tardis says, it's like the internet and social media. A lot of good and a lot of bad. AI will be the same. It will be some of the rough years until laws are made to protect against stuff like deepfake, for sure. Oh, she was asking about R2. Where are you? He's lost. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Got two separate kinds of people here. R2 concentrating very, very serious. And then JT's like, I'm already done. I'm good. Uh, Hold on, honey. Men at work. Just... <laughs> I well, kind of forgot well, that Mario had um, mm -hmm. sideburns. I know, right? It's kind of important. All of a sudden, you'll notice what a difference it makes having some of these things uh, no longer there. That's for sure. Um we're at, well, I'll let you guys finish all of that up. We'll take a little bit of a commercial break. Now, at this point in the video, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, Tabitha's just so great. I love her artwork. I wish I could support her and help her in some way. Just let her know that I think what she's doing is great. And I just want to say that I am so glad that that's what you're thinking right now. And if you are looking for ways to support me and my channel, there are a couple of links in the description box below. You can check out my Patreon page where you can get exclusive behind the scenes footage and pictures of what I'm working on, my works in progress. You can also check out my Etsy shop where you can purchase some of my art pieces that I have made. Or if you just wanna make a one-time donation, you can click on my PayPal link because maybe you just have a bunch of money sitting around and you just don't know what to do with it and you think man she looks hungry let's let her grab a slice of pizza this weekend i would appreciate it but most importantly if you could leave me a like that would be fantastic and if you're new here and you like what you see and you just simply subscribe and ring the notification bell so you get updated on all of my upcoming videos now on with the show indeed that's on a nice, with the that's show. a nice commercial Thank you. I try to work hard. It was AI generated. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tabitha, do you ever see any art ads that would belong on late night with Cap? Um, probably. I just didn't think about it. I can't do JT's job for him. Like he's got to earn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. No, I'm sure I have seen some here and there and all around. Um, I'm going to go ahead and progress with the eye portion R2. Okay. Um, uh, I'm just going to make on top of the nose, like a little bit above it, make these little ovals. They are pretty big, but you can always start out small and it's add more. It's very surprising how much bad design is out there. Yeah, you know, maybe that's the reason that the the push for the AI art came along. You know, like, man, humans do a horrible job. <laughs> Let's help them out a little bit. Not all humans, of course. There's some really good. What do you think is the worst you've ever seen, R2? Or, excuse me, JT? Um, that's, it's usually when um, someone's trying to just cut corners. Mm -hmm. And um, they either try to do it themselves or they just don't know what they're getting. So when they hire someone, mm -hmm. they, um, they, they, they're, they're overcharged and they're not, they're not getting a quality product. That's usually mm -hmm. when it gets kind of. All right. So you've been doing commissions for a while now. What would you say for yourself personally? What was one of the worst commissions you've ever done when you first started? Um, cause I know that in my own experience, I did logos for a little while. And when I go back and think about what I was doing, I'm like, worse, oh, like man. working with or worse, like just designing, designing, you know, or any kind of experience, maybe it was a bad client or maybe like we've all had those clients, like you were saying before, Hey, make me something cool. And so when you fish around for some more information, they're like, well, I like yellow. 
<laughs> um, I haven't really had the troublesome person yet, and I haven't okay. really had the all of my logos. I actually ended up like really liking. Okay. Um, so I haven't really came across as someone that's been real difficult. Um, that's now, um, there are the people that um, they just don't know what they're gonna get. Like they've been mm-hmm. shafted before. They've they've been mm-hmm. ripped off. They spent a lot of money, and they um, their the quality they have gotten return wasn't that great. Yeah, and that's what I always try to do. I try to do something that's really that you are really gonna like. And oh, for yeah, sure. maybe I could charge you a little bit more, but I mean, you could just. I just wanted to give you the quality over the. the oh yeah, it's it's just something I'm liking to do. So I'm not trying to make a living off of it. <laughs> so okay, I had wondered about that because you're really good at it. You've had quite a few clients. I had wondered if that was like a side hustle for you, or if that it was is, something it you was, did in your. It was very life. much a side hustle. It's not. Um, it's not the money maker. <laughs> <laughs> so I work in an environment where I can be creative, but I have a lot of um, boundaries. Okay. Um, being in the corporate world you you have to be you have to you can't they like you to be outside the box but not too much not too much so, yeah so you have to stick with guidelines rules um a lot of other other things legal stuff so you can't really branch out you can't really make like really yeah. unique things um unless uh and also you have like 20 people deciding if they like your design or not. So, um, yeah, that kind of takes the fun out of it too. You get a lot of comments like, I want the letters to be 90 miles per hour wind, not 100 miles per hour wind. And I'm like, you mean the angle of the italic? <laughs> you yeah. want it like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, the descriptions that some people get, and you can't, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of laugh at them as the artist, as the designer, you laugh at them, not because you're trying to be condescending, but because it's like, you're laughing at what a creative choice of words being used to describe something. Yeah, Um, pretty much. It's like, what are you, what? (laughs) I remember when I was in college taking graphic design, and uh, you guys are probably going to laugh at this story, but... We had one of the main people of the college, the head of the graphic design department. Um, Noob Reviews, is that you? Of course it is. You know, if you show up. I am a complete and total pop culture noob. I know nothing. (laughs) (laughs) I got to bring it up. (laughs) One of my favorite clips. Um, Hope you're having fun over there on your channel with uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I'm going to be hopefully streaming today. If you guys don't follow me on Twitch, be sure to do that because I'm going to continue Link's adventure. But um, we were were being taught by the head of the, the director of the school's graphic design. And he was like, just trying to let us know what some of our experiences were going to be like, the kind of clientele we we're going to have to deal with. And he's like, and some of the ridiculous comments that are going to come across. And he showed us something that had to do with, um, shoot, what was it? Oh, a W. It was supposed to be like some kind of natural, organic, whatever the case might be, um, product that somebody was asking a design for. And there was a W in there that was a very curvaceous W, right? And he's like, and you know, I'm trying to go through and explain why we're doing all of this. He's like, and in the middle of this session, he's like, I get one of the, I think it was one of the corporate people. They had like raised their hands and he's like, yes, can I help you? He's like, he's like, and I had this guy actually ask me in the middle of this session, did you make the W look like boobs on purpose? Ah. <laughs> so then the guy's like, looks at his design, looks back. He's like, no, I didn't. And the problem was now after that guy had said that, all he could see was that in the design. So he's like, we quickly had to ch- change up the design element so that yeah. people weren't looking at something provocative when they were trying to buy like i don't that know it was like a lot of the design yeah a lot of the design fails that i've shown on my channel not you know they didn't they probably didn't mean it to look a certain yeah. way it just ended up being that way because someone caught it so and that's usually yeah. why you need like a couple of people to either work on the project with you or you at least need your your person that you can you go need a to. perverted person in the room <laughs> does this look 
wrong in any shape or form of capacity. Um, yeah, it, it's helpful to have. I'm going to create some more brown, guys, so I can go ahead and get working on the facial hair. So you were talking about your um, art school. Like, mm -hmm. um, one thing where, where I was, it was very, um, I don't know about you, but it was very competitive. Um, mm. Very competitive. Where well, let me clear something up really quickly. I didn't go to a specific art school. I went to a community co college with the art department. Oh, okay. Well, the school I went to was very, very competitive. Really? Um, okay. You, yeah. So like people, you had to be very cautious what you were telling, what your designs were, what you were doing, what you were sharing yeah. with people. Yeah, because. <clears throat> Yeah, people would either try to do something like you and try to do it better or um, some other they would or they would um, try to sabotage you before you even got started. It was a, it was just very, very competitive. I, I will say you guys probably won't find this to be much of a shock, you know, given how competitive I am. But I mean, I would look at other people's artwork and uh, it's not so much that I wanted to steal it, but I was trying to be inspired by it because I I got started with artwork, quote unquote, late in life. You know, I didn't like a lot of people I noticed were just so much better at me than me than at the at artwork. And it's because I was a little bit, I guess, academically, I was delayed I, mm -hmm. I fell into artwork later on. So I wasn't like taking classes in high school and all of this kind of stuff. So I would, I would periodically stare at other people's artwork and try to not steal their artwork or their project, but really just try to learn and be inspired by what they were creating because I'd never really been exposed to that kind of atmosphere before. Um, yeah. So we had teachers. Um, so at the end of your, uh, your grad right before graduation, like the first, last six months, you worked on creating your portfolio, your graduation portfolio. So what mm -hmm. you and then that was they were prepping you to use that alongside of your resume to um, get jobs. Yeah. So um, they were very serious on it. So you actually interviewed all the teachers. <clears throat> like oh. so I had like eight pre-interviews before I even went to real inter interviews. Okay. And um, <laughs> he didn't do this to me, but, oh, well, there was one teacher that he did. So you went through different phases. So the first three months, you would show them your portfolio, and they'd be like, okay, tweak some of this. And the second one, then they go, okay, that's good. And then your third one's supposed to be the best of everything. Um, and um, so my first time I showed it to <laughs> these this one teacher and he was very hard. He was very strict. It was a, like a nine page portfolio and it had some of my good work in it. And he was like, crap, crap, crap. Okay. This oh, is okay. No. Crap. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean crap? He's like, the way you laid this out, the way you're showing your, how you did your design, it's a good design, but you're not telling the story, right? How mm -hmm. you came up with it. And I was like, okay. Wow. So he wanted you, he wants your portfolio to be, this is where I started. And this is where I finished. So it's the, Whoever's interview gets to see your your thought process through the whole story. So that was pretty cool. I I know my dad is not artistic at all, and he he had issue he has issues with grading art. Of course, if you're not artistic, you can't really understand what you're looking for. But I get where his point is. He's like, I don't understand how you can give somebody a B or a C if it's a subjective topic or subjective subject. He's like, if it's open for personal in interpretation, how can you possibly give somebody a bad grade? And uh, of course, we all know, well, for those that are, you know, artistic or pe perhaps maybe more open minded towards these things, you'll understand that there are fundamentals that you need to follow. Like we mentioned before, balance, composition, color choice um and just experience it's, it's something i don't know that if you can really explain per se but i do say that there was one time where i totally agreed with my dad and it was in my my second i think it was my second year of graphic design and uh we it was a collaboration between other students right and so me and this other guy got partnered up and we were supposed to mix two different kinds of music genres and then create a band essentially for it a band name and a cover design for yep. it yeah. and 
That was super fun. So you guys might remember I talked about it the other day. Turbo Polka. We mixed <laughs> polka and pop music. We were so excited when we found out that that was an actual genre. And so we I created I was in charge of creating the cover design for the CD, you know, back when we had our CDs. And uh, the other guy, Jared, he was supposed to create the CD cover. OK, so I create the front. It was kind of like this disco theme. I had this totally hot Bavarian chick on the front and nice. had, uh, you know, the dance floor and, and had my title or whatever. And my teacher came over and said, I th he's like, it looks good. It's just that I think that there's something missing, like maybe a stream of light or something, just a little something over on the side. And I, I would, I put something like that over there. And to me, it took away from the appeal of the woman, right? Because she's wearing her fake deer knoll and all this kind of stuff. So you want to get the idea that this is fun music and, you know, party music with hot chicks and it's some kind of German Bavarian, whatever kind of music. So obviously the deer knoll. And it's like that light just didn't make sense to me. I got a B on that while my friend got an A on it. And I was so disgruntled because that was literally just personal preference, right? It really yep. wasn't, you know, and that, see, that's the thing they're also trying to teach you is you can come up with the greatest design ever. And then you yeah. can also design something that's okay. And your mm -hmm. client's going to pick the okay because in yes. their mind, that's what they wanted. <laughs> I've done that <laughs> multiple times. There's so many logo designs that I've done that the client, the person who I did it for didn't go with the one. I was like, oh, really? You didn't want yeah. that one? Mm -hmm. My mom's yep. funny. She says, I remember that. Yeah, I get I, I, I get competitive when it comes to grades. OK, so I, I'm very vocal when I'm dissatisfied with the grade that I got. But uh, you're right. I remember my graphics teacher also telling me he's like, look, when you create a smorgasbord of logo options for your client, never give them the ones that you don't think are going to be good because he's a guaranteed they're always going to pick like nine times out of ten. They're going to pick the logos that you don't think yeah. look good. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're not designing for you. You're designing for them, for them. And he's like, so if you don't want them to pick the logos that you don't like, do not present them. To them. Usually I give people two options um, yeah. or I tell them, no, this is what you want. This is what you're going to get. And usually they go with that one, too. So. Right. Because people most people want to be guided into what mm -hmm. they need when it comes yeah, to you the could logo. you can tell right off the bat if the person really wants something specific or they're just just give me yeah. something you know i'll i'll take whatever i can get and then yeah, that's when you can really surprise them by the way i'm going to retitle this episode and change the um thumbnail to um paint painting joys of painting with jt yeah also including our tv <laughs> <laughs> poor buddy my poor buddy <laughs> How's friend. it going, R2? I just kind of pursued. I don't know where okay. you're at. Um, trying to fix the eyebrows. So you are right. You are. So I don't know if you guys notice, but in our little eyebrows here, there is a swatch of black at the top. Yeah, I'm going to do all my black stuff at the end. Yeah, well, exactly. So I was just about to say that. So we're on the same page here. If the whites of the eyes are dry, you're going to want to do the blues and then move on um to the blacks so that way it's all that but well excuse me you want to do the blues and then <laughs> i would rinse my brush again and then do the logo on the hat because once you get black in the brush it can be very difficult to get that back out if you are not running for fresh water all of the time so um i might Unless actually have like a hundred brushes like i do right <laughs> well you know jt's cheating we all know he's he's been cheating this whole time so or he's just been planning ahead. You know, this is what happens when you invite artists onto the channel. They already kind of have a, a an idea. So R2 is a little bit out of a disadvantage there. Yeah. Um, you never answered my question, though, R2. Do you have any, like, painting experience? None. None. You've never <laughs> painted for flimsies? Surely. This is uh, his first time. Not like this type of painting. Um, like, years and years ago, like, every now and then... Um, I did do some like little like metal figurine painting. Oh, cool. And um, that's a know, lot of work. 
Yeah, that's really that, hard. It was, yeah, in my opinion, it was easy because it was something that was real little, and I would just do it little by little. Um, I unfortunately don't have any of those little figurines anymore, but oh. uh, I did it when I yeah, worked at my family's hobby shop, and we would get in like I remember, I think I did like the Terminator. There oh, wow. was um, like uh, some little monster figurines doing those. Those were kind of fun because I just kind of went with what I thought looked good and just had mm -hmm. fun with it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I've done like that, but never pictures. Okay. So you did like three dimensional objects that can be really difficult to switch over from three dimensional to a flat surface and having to create the illusion of something uh, three dimensional. Yeah. Are you enjoying the process thus far? Dangerous question here. Um, yes. And I'm just like the, the paint has been very difficult to work with. I didn't think it was going to be that tough. Mm. Um, so I, from going forward, I'm going to have to tell my guests, thank you, R2, for this learning experience. Please use new paint. <laughs> all my other paint is new, but even that has been, like, difficult. Like, it just doesn't, like, coat very well. Really? Okay. Yeah. And maybe that, maybe I should have uh, bought individual paint instead of a, a set. I was just like, oh, there's a set. That's got everything. I'm going to get Well, that. and it's kind of the thing, too. And, and and I never want to put the pressure on it. It's just more of a fact of life. Is like you get what you pay for. So a lot of times the sets, you don't know how old that paint has been or how long that paint's been sitting in the set, you know. Um, oh, I just realized that JT disappeared. Oh, no, there he is. Okay. <laughs> I thought you left. I couldn't see you. I was really focused. You're really focused. Oh, man, that looks so good. Let's have a look. Oops. <laughs> That looks so fun. You've already gone ahead with the black. Very <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> looks so good. Chris the Geek says, I painted my computer chair recently. Like on purpose or on like accidentally spilled? Because, you know. <laughs> now, again, it is up to you what all you would like to outline. You can see from the cartoon image here that not everything is necessarily outlined pretty much everything um like the, the logo is not outlined but like the hat is and the face and everything whereas the um the pipe is not right so it's just kind of up to you or at least well some of the pipe is it's up to you just how cartoony you want this to look or i like i said myself i prefer not necessarily to have um outlines but uh we're coming down to the end of this doing really well here I'm just going to let all that dry. I'm just going to go ahead and carry on with the black and just do the M last here. So let's go ahead. Uh, well, I'm Realizing, having a good time. Good. <laughs> I, I'm glad. Realizing that Mario only has, what is this, like four fingers? Yeah. He's a cartoon character. Do you work with any other kind of medium besides digital art, JT? Um, no, not in no. my not in my main job. No, it's all online stuff. Yeah. Um, Actually, um, give a little hint. I oh. don't really do graphic art. I do more of a um, <clears throat> user interface design. So I do mostly uh, website. Okay. Uh, design. Yeah. Nice. But, it's a good business to be in. Yeah. So I basically look at people come to me with either a site they've already created or a new site that they want to create for our company inside of our in our inside of our company, mm -hmm. and uh, they and I kind of analyze it, critique it, come on, and then improve just it. Tell them what you really do. You design <laughs> AI porn websites. <laughs> well, yeah, I do that too. Yeah, I thought you were gonna be like he's Batman, but okay, we went a completely different route. <laughs> um, well, you know, gotta pay the bills. But uh, what pro? <laughs> when you do your graphic design, what program do you use? Are you a Photoshop man? Both combination. Okay. It just it, it it depends on the um what it is like what the design is. 
Okay. Sometimes you so can do a lot of your vector designs in Illustrator, and then you can bring them over. Yeah. To yeah. Photoshop. Gosh, I haven't and, like, used Illustrator in forever. <laughs> you can, you can, um, basically clean up or stylize it better, like shadows and stuff like that, if you wanted to. Yeah. For sure. My goodness. Like the, I... our, after the weekend logo, I did that one. Um, we that was a combination of AI or and Photoshop. Was it okay? Stealing from other people? Tisk tisk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought better of you, JT. All right. Well, that's over. Um, no, it was a combination of the like. So we so the lettering was all in Illustrator, and yeah. then when I brought it over to Photoshop, we did the um, we did the colors and some of the glow effects in Photoshop. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. I remember one of our first assignments in graphics class, my first time being introduced to Photoshop. Like, that was the other thing, too. I had absolutely no knowledge of Photoshop. I'd been working on, like, essentially knockoff brand, basic. Oh, I messed up the brim of my hat. But that's okay. He still looks like he's wearing one. Um, but, you know, stuff that I would, like, I would work with um, programs like Funhouse or there was, like, digital artist we got at Costco or something like that. And that was what I worked with. So then our teacher's mm -hmm. like, okay, I want you for your first assignment, first day. He's like, create an image that from far away grabs my attention. And so everybody's over there doing cool stuff, swirling letters and all this, and using the different brush tools. And I'm over there like, I... I literally just spelled my name with a weird brush that I found mm -hmm. and then put little corners around it because <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. I'd never been exposed to anything like that. Naturally, I did not get picked. Um, but eventually, because, you know, I'm... well, if you ever do that again, the one thing that's going to draw attention of people far away is something really simple, because if you think of a billboard, that yeah a good and that was a that. hard lesson to learn it still is for me i'm not very good at doing simplistic designs but you're right you know when i when he showed us which design he chose he picked it was that it was actually the guy i worked with later on he picked this guy he wrote his name jared right big mm -hmm. i think it was bold letters and then he had an arrow pointing down to it it was a very long arrow and he used the swirl tool and just put swirlies down the length of the arrow. And that's the one that was interesting from a distance. Well, from a distance, this looks really good. But from, like, it does really from close. a distance. Paintings are supposed to look better at a distance. <laughs> it looks really fantastic, JT. Looks good. Go. Oh, man, I do like the blind. My eyes are a little wonky. Like, it's like he's a little drunk. He, he does. <laughs> yeah, they are a little bit wonky, I'll admit. Um, that's okay. My brim is a little wonky. He's wearing his hat a little sideways here. Just to be now, so. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Let's have a look. Hey. Oh, he looks good. You know who that is when you see it. That's the whole point. No, that looks really good, dude. It does. Nice. Especially. going to look a lot better than ours. Be well, honest. I don't know about a lot better, but it will look better than our twos. Um. <laughs> I don't speak. And, and the, <laughs> now inspired. there's going to be something really awesome about R2s that's going to be so different from mine that so maybe mine might look cleaner but that doesn't yeah, necessarily gonna be like oh R2 is so special <laughs> <laughs> well we already say that behind your back it's okay yeah, I don't doubt it um the thing is that mine might look cleaner, more polished, but that doesn't necessarily make a painting look better or preferred. And again, that's where the um, preference comes in. You know, some people like it looking a little bizarre, a little quirky, a little bold, a little contrasting, whatever the case might be. My, uh, my maternal grandma used to paint and... Um... I don't know what the technique is, but she did a lot of like flowers, things like that. But okay. She was very heavy on the paint. There was like a lot of like 
mm. texture to it. And oh, like, impasto painting. Yeah. And actually, I'll show it to you guys at the end. Um, yeah. A little bit different, but uh, my uncle, who's no longer with us, did duck carving. He would win oh. duck carving competitions. And I, I got one of his ducks, and it's not one of his better ones. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, a lot of people were taking stuff. I wasn't there. This is what got brought back to me, but still like, I love that I have it. And, uh, you know, they call those decoy paintings. Um, I mean, just won tons and tons of awards, uh, doing it. The basement was just full of ribbons. And, um, I'd like to clarify, we're talking about wood, right? Yes. Yeah. They're, okay. They're wooden, right. you know, well, you, so you, didn't get, you didn't, you didn't get, get the artistic. Duck. And then I didn't get like one of like the male mallards, which is what I wanted, or like a wood duck. Um, okay. Those were, you know, phenomenal. Um, I mean, I hate to say it. I got a, it was a female duck. They're far more drab, but I mean, it's still, it looks real. I, I mean, it's just not nearly as vibrant as some of the other mm -hmm. ones that he, he did. Um, pretty cool yeah but again a different type carved of them all, he, he carved them out and, and then painted them too that was like the other impressive thing yeah let's see now you don't want to forget to put the catch lights in the eyes i'm going to flip my paintbrush over and just use the back end of it and oh, that's the, a good technique i didn't think of that Haha, ha, that one up on you. Then you don't know everything, do you, JT? I don't um, know everything. No. <laughs> so, no, you get really nice circles with this. And uh, you can put however many you want in the eye. I recommend no more than two for the shape and the size of these eyes. But you can put just the one. I typically like to put them on the same side because that works. That makes sense. But I noticed that in our painting, um, <laughs> he has it on the opposite side. So I'm going to mix things up and just put them on the same side and see what that looks like okay he looks he looks a little scared i'm not gonna lie <laughs> looks a little well, nervous coming out of here i think i'm finished i think i'm finished too let me i'm see. gonna sign mine <laughs> Joey sign. of course right. should i sign Date? it jt or cap <laughs> I, I'll, I'll leave that up to you pray about I'll that. sign it what what i normally do with your heart follow your nose <laughs> um you know near far wherever you are it'll be a good now i will tell you matt bader this hey, is so matt. nice tab painting with the boys you know it although i'm going to be having quite a few girls on the channel here coming soon so there stick around for some ladies. All done. <laughs> uh let's see there it is oh that's a cool signature it looks like a little bird flying underneath of it in the distance yeah there that's you go. great well Cap did it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've got mine here. And I have no paint on my hands. I don't know how you accomplished that. It must be a digital. Oh, well, I got a little thing. bit. Oh, please. Um, I'm covered in paint here. <laughs> so, I don't know yeah, how that I happens. Like I, I also have painted a whole house without getting paint on on my hands. You know, I'm covered in it. It's not polite to brag. In case your mother never taught you, it's just, it's rude. It's really a rude thing to it do. Is. Um, I don't know how not to make a mess, for real. Uh, Robert says, good job, JT. Snaps for JT. We're getting our fingers warmed up to snap for R2 here. His looks fun <laughs> as well. Okay. It was a fun... Um... <laughs> He's got, like, nervous <laughs> smile. Yeah. It was a fun, uh, a fun painting. It was fun. Like yeah hey rolling chairs hello hello yeah it is a fun it's kind of a simple painting but it's it's uh i mean this is something fun. like um most people i mean you could probably do on your own anyway in the chat yeah well sure. i'm definitely glad we didn't do the other one that's for sure it's the other one is not as difficult as you think it is um it's just the uh, you know, well, you never showed me that one, so I don't even know which one you're talking about. I, I think I it did. was, more, I think it was more intimidating to him because of the color choices. Let me go get it. Let me go get it. And uh... all right, well, I, yeah, okay. I'm glad we did this one. It's fun. It's okay, buddy. <laughs> so it's not like if I do a bad job, like my YouTube channel gets taken away from me. It's fine. Actually, that was that was. 
That that was I didn't hear that part of the. No, that's what you got. Yeah, that's what. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so JT, this was the one we could have done. This is the one I did when oh. Makani was on my channel. That would have been a fun one. Yeah, it's not. But as you already did that one, so. It's good yeah, that we but did but my guests didn't paint this one. I painted this one, so we did different ones. But I think it's they're cool fun. about this picture. You can like go upside, you know. You can. Yeah, it actually, I love the fact that you can use it upside down. <laughs> uh, Robert says, "Don't worry, R two, you're in a safe space." No, he isn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, he's not. Let me put these side by side here. We can. See yeah, this was fun. I've been meaning to do this with you for a long since you started these, so it's been. Yeah, I invited I'm glad you we guys a do it. while ago. So, you know, just had to wait for JT to move and get the ghosts out of his house and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maria says, check out a few tweets to see what I was up to while you guys were working. Uh-oh. Nervousness. What left do you have to do, R2? Um, I technically got to put the black in his eyes. Is there anything I can help you with along in your journey? <laughs> well, if you could come out to Arkansas and give me a hand, that probably would be a lot more help, but no. <laughs> uh, she just stand behind me and just be like, It'll be like it 14 hours, but I'll, I'll be there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to have to add his little M later, but. Well, that's okay. It's a small detail, yeah. but overall, the uh, the paintings looking good, looking fresh, recognizable. Yeah, yeah. I think it. I think you've done a good job. I wasn't asking you, JT. I was asking you too. Oh well, fine. <laughs> I won't. Then just goes deathly uh, silent. <laughs> I know crickets. <laughs> it's okay. No, these look really fantastic. I don't know if this will inspire you to. Um, paint other things but uh, if not i'm glad you were able to have that ex experience legends of the brave bard hey mm -hmm. gang great stream mad love well thank you for coming around again for those who haven't hit the like button please do so <gasps> a grand reveal we have oh that hey, looks so good that actually looks really good that looks like I, really I, like I, a I gotta, cartoon I gotta your eyes are like more. your eyes are way better than any yeah. of ours yeah i agree your eyes are definitely. I like that. Honestly, I don't know if you did that on purpose or not. I like that his eyebrows are a little bit askew, as it looks like he's coming out questioning things when he's I, coming yeah, out. He's like, that. he's like, who did this to me? <laughs> no, it looks good. It looks. My head, really my head was shorter. Yours is elongated. It's good. So. Yeah, I feel like my interpretation looks a lot more like more, the Luigi switched hats. Like yes. his head is a little bit longer instead of like, but I think they did that on purpose. Oh, not with this to uh, to kind of basically be able to go back and forth yeah. between. Well, it. you know, too, I mentioned like I did little figurines like I did this for my son years ago. I made him a Mario mushroom. You probably have a like steady hand. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just well, a, because th th this is a wine cork that I that I carved. Oh. Oh, it, so you it, like the meticulous? It's, it's a Gatorade cap for the base. That's, That's awesome. what I did. I love the creativity. Yeah, JT, you're gonna have to get something so that way it just kind of, hang on, like, just right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. He's probably not gonna stay here, but yeah. There we go. Ah, the duck. Wow, that's amazing. So yeah, my uncle carved this out of wood. Carved the head, everything by hand. That's cool. Then had painted this, and uh, I like how you said like female ducks aren't pretty. They really are. That's they, a, that's, well, that's, but just... if you see like this is a female mallard. If you saw the male, he's got the the head is you know like this real like vibrant metallic emerald. Um, nice. Yep. And um, but yeah, I mean, I remember watching him paint these too, and. All the brush strokes and everything, and that that I will say that the feathers are really amazing. It's another lost yeah. art. I you can do say. that if you met if you painted them, you did the models. You can definitely do something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, but it was just it was always so cool to watch him him work. You can carry, thing, you like, can carry the tradition. I don't carry, well carry on my I, wayward. I, I have no idea how to do it. Um, he's no longer with us anymore, so. 
Well, um, you know, there is this. Platform. Is he in Canada with uh, Maria? <laughs> yeah. He's close <laughs> enough. He's in Michigan. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's great. Oh, my God. Get back to painting, y'all. <laughs> um, but I do want to say thank you so much, guys, for being on my channel and hanging out with me. And, yeah. Uh, this was you fun. Guys, you guys created yes. something really beautiful. And um, <laughs> I, I do. I like, I like, again, I always like the different takes that people have, the different approach. Um, whether you have a, a lot of skill, whether you have minimal skill, you're still going to create something that looks really cool and you Thanks, need Tabitha. an individual. <laughs> and uh, I think it did. You came out really good. Too, but, you know, you can't help everybody. Have, and, you know, uh, I have a, I, have you ever had Ginger Ninja on one of these? I haven't. He would be a good test. Um, test. He's really good. He might, he might make you truly international too, because isn't he in Japan? He is. He's all right. He's really good. Like you. Oh, he's. I think your style. Would look, be see, really the, good. the number one rule uh, of the joys of painting is that don't have people better than you. I'm just kidding. No, it's a. <laughs> no, I. My guests have created really beautiful art pieces, and um, a lot of them have and turned. We out didn't spill anything. Like. Unlike Jay. <laughs> yeah, you didn't murder my brushes either, which I always got to appreciate JT. He sent me a, basically a, a donation for brushes because of that episode. And I'll never forget <laughs> it. We've got those new brushes sitting over here um, <laughs> because of that episode. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for being with us. Chat, you've been wonderful. I hope you yeah, enjoyed I, this. He's got the episode. M on him. <laughs> ah, there he is. It is amazing with that. It really looks good, R2. He well, does look you. like like the perfect cartoon for that and uh, hope everybody enjoyed this episode like and subscribe for more content i've got more youtubers coming on as i continue the joys of teaching other youtubers how to if i was watching this video i would like it i would like the video and i would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed that's a